Jotaro, he's got three <laughs> abilities that Jotaro can't, e- Jotaro Kujo can't even defeat. Yeah. With brute strength alone. And he let an elementary school kid beat him with no stand ability at, at all. all. Just the love for his mom. This man has the ability to turn back time. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Volume 1's Bizarre Adventure. Which means today we'll be covering the last half of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Part 4, Episodes 20 through 39. Which also means that today, my name is Josh Kira. Michael, uh, I'm not going to put this oh, in my mouth wow. because it's dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And today I am joined by... Uh, Megan. I don't, I didn't think of one. Uh, 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 casual Raimi Perrine. Casual Raimi Casual. Perrine. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, thank you for tuning in to another <laughs> one of our uh, volume one, volume one's bizarre adventure episodes. Um, it was a lot. Uh, we had a lot of <laughs> behind the scenes drama before this episode began. I would, yeah, drama. I, I, I'm dumb. I usually try on my cosplays before we sit down and record, and I didn't do that. Um, so I tried it on. It did not. It did not fit. Um, it was way too small around the bosoms, which was interesting because that's the first time <laughs> I think I've ever tried something on that's been tight there. Uh, but the they were can I I was gonna but it is what it is it is what it is and like I'm flattered like thank you but yeah. now I don't have an outfit to wear but Josh looks great thank you uh, but enough of all that enough enough is enough we finished good grief good grief we finished JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Four so we're gonna talk about it first we're gonna give our general thoughts now we can talk about it as a whole and then we're gonna start going through beat by beat or episode by episode. Um, and uh, going through things more granularly. I think I said that. Is that, that a word? Granu- granu- granularly. Oh, <laughs> okay, now, now, good now it's God. getting good grief. Now it's getting worse. Um, slower. We're going to go through things. Okay. We're going to slow things down and we're going to go through things episode by episode. Okay. Megan, now that we're done, I'm curious what your thoughts on the part as a whole are. And even because I've been racking my brain and I've been racking my brain as well. And a lot. I mean, I've had a heavy, heavy heart these past couple of days because oh. I've been trying to trying to see and feel out where this kind of ranks for me um, compared to some previous parts. But go ahead, Megan. What were, what were your thoughts? So general thoughts, obviously, th- the reason why I do or, or did like watching this part was because, I mean, that just goes with any JoJo, really. The differences between each part um, and how different, like, you know, obviously the new protagonist is and the other cast of characters, but also, you know, the setting, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but with this, I mean, this was like definitely like the most different um, for me watching it and experiencing it and uh same thing with the stands too it was definitely more of it was a different vibe entirely um and i appreciated that and it was fun and i would say like the best thing the the highlight for part four for me was just the overall like i wouldn't say absurdity but like the silliness Mm -hmm. of everything um with part three like the stakes were so so high and with part four like the stakes were high but not as high, um, which just led to them kind of like being able to goof off more. Um, and I really liked how each character got a lot of development too, um, like Koichi, um, like all the other cast of characters. Like we really got to spend a My lot boy, more. Okoyasu, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Okoyasu, like we got to spend more time with them that I felt like you know we saw Polnareff, we saw Avdol do their thing and fights, um, but we didn't really get to like. I don't know, spend as much like just chill time with them. Um, and I felt like in part four, we got that a lot more. Um, it did feel like a wacky detective thriller slice of life, like I said in the previous one. And then like the end kind of solidified that for me. Um, and if there was one thing I could say mm-hmm. <laughs> that I wasn't the biggest fan of, um, I mean, Kira's, Kira's photo father. Oh yeah, Kira's it, yeah, 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 yeah. I, Again, it's like not the craziest like actual ridicule, but like damn, it's that not fool about was it's not mad about, annoying. It's not about his dad or his dad being a ghost. It's also yeah, a that's, ghost exactly, in a exactly. Photo that's flying around town. I mean, part of that was funny. Part of the charm. It's yeah. funny, but what it was, it was, it was, it felt like another device that was clearly designed by Iraqi to prolong this thing. Like whether for whatever reason, Shonen Jump editors or just he wasn't ready 
to kind of proceed to the the final act or the final showdown this just felt like really kind of contrived a little bit and and did slow things down similarly to how in part three you know you get through all of the tarot cards all of the stands and then you realize then then they get into egypt then you think like okay here we go and it's like (laughs) psych there are nine more and you're like damn and then the rest of that just feels really slowed down and iraqi does it again here um, which I, I, and I do agree with, although the stand battles and how creative they were was definitely something I enjoyed. And in yes. part three, I enjoyed a lot too, but it yes. just feels, it feels different. They feel better. They feel, you know, more like Iraqi obviously has more experience. So they just, mm-hmm. they're more creative. I, I, I had a lot more fun with them. Uh, but yeah, I did feel it kind of, kind of <laughs> go, uh, go down a, a, a different kind of path, a detour, it, it slowed down a bit. A bit, but that's not to say that, again, I mean, that's always like kind of a crit- the crit- same criticism that we had in the last part, um, but that's not to say like there was so much fun um, in the second part. Uh, when we get to see Stan users that, you know, was a highlight for me that weren't always bad um, in this, like, you know, Cinderella was one of my favorite parts. Mm-hmm. Like, I love that whole episode. Um, and just like the development. And at times there were times when characters would do things kind of like not in character for them to do, <laughs> but then they would yeah. get like redeemed and it'd be like, oh, OK, this is fine because yeah. um, they this is this obviously is. is I think. To be. Ultimately, not what's going on right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, for me, I mean, I do think that it, it uh, there's a lot of moving parts, right? Number one, I appreciate when people say, like, you know, you're really going to like part four. It's probably going to be your favorite. Like, look forward to it because it does give me something to look forward to and I get excited. But I think that was, that meant that uh, mm-hmm. the the stakes and expectations were pretty high going going into part four. And I was constantly, and I and and I and I know this isn't always a great thing, and I wasn't doing it to a point where it took me out of part four. It was any sort of detriment to my viewing mm-hmm. experience. But you know, I was kind of like going back and forth, like, man, where does this rank? How do I feel about it compared to part four? And I think ultimately for me, where I landed, and it was a back and forth. I had a heavy heart for days, like I said. But part three is so high on my list. My favorite part uh, now, my second favorite part, but by the smallest amount part yeah, four yeah, 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 yeah. did not blow part three out of the water in my opinion for me and my personal ranking of the parts um part four yes i think finally after some thinking took that number one spot but barely and i think what it was what it came down to was exactly what you said i loved setting everything in morio i loved getting to know these characters I loved seeing them in battle, but also just walking around town. Exactly. The dynamic sort of form. Mm-hmm. I liked mm-hmm. I liked everything about this community. Uh, and I and I really, really, really felt a different sort of feeling because like you said, we 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 do get to the stakes aren't as high and we do get to see high stakes, but also like goofy moments and and yeah. and fun just like side quests and adventures and um, that ultimately was what did it because like in part three for, in order for the stakes are so high in order for someone to be out of the episodes for a while, they either have to fake their own death <laughs> or like go to the hospital and be in the hospital for like 10 episodes. <laughs> Uh, but here they could just be walking around, you know, yeah, and, and yeah, we have yeah. Rohan and we have, you know, yeah. um, um, Rohan and, and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, not Okoyasu, Koichi? Koichi on their own little side adventure. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, like, and even, it is just what it is. And even, I mean, the expectations for sure of like what Joseph and Joe Terrell were going to be up to were definitely high. And I wish we got more of them. But again, it's not their story right now. Um, right. It is about Josuke, which I mean, Josuke, I mean, Joe Turo is like Josuke's. It's like neck and neck. Yeah. Like, I like them uh, the same, but for different reasons. Like, I, I don't know who I could pick as my favorite, but I really, really like Josuke a lot. Yeah. Um, he's such a sweetheart. Joe Turo soon today for sure. You know, he tells you that he doesn't care, but he really cares. But Josuke, like, really cares, mm-hmm. and he'll do anything. Um, and he just had some badass moments, too. But the whole cast, like you said, like, the whole cast ultimately really makes me... It's going to make me feel nostalgic, and it's, mm-hmm. like, it endears you to keep going and, like, really... Re- like, a character that got 
redeemed that we were like this fool this fool sucks and then you were like oh he, that's sad that he died that yeah. was really dramatic and really sad yeah um and yeah i i i i, I really enjoyed it i i really fucking enjoyed it like <laughs> incredibly uh an incredible amount um but I, I wrote down too, you know, I, for myself, I had to sort this out for myself and just in case anybody cares. But I do think at the end of the day, right, uh, Diamond is Unbreakable is barely to me because, again, part three was the part that really won me over. And I know it's not a lot of people's favorite parts because of how it felt feels like it drags on. And I think that when you when you mentioned too, uh before how people were like part four is like really going to get you because I think like part three we did kind of say and even part two, we did say like, yeah, this is good. But like. There's a lot of fighting. And then part four does have fighting, but significantly less, I think. Right. Um, so maybe that's why people are like telling us like we were going to really enjoy part four, which we did, which we did a lot um, for different reasons, of course. But, but I, wrote, yeah. I wrote down Diamond is a Breakable is a, a little bit above. A little bit above by like a half? Stardust Crusaders. It's just a little bit above. Uh, okay. I don't want to get into. Cool. What are you talking about? You want to get like how much? Like point zero zero four. I want to know. Above? The people need to know. I don't know. I, it's just a little bit above. It was hard God, enough. I thought you were a professional. I am. You see my tie. <laughs> um, I think, and again, this was so hard. Josuke is fucking awesome, dude. And as a protagonist, he is just, I think, what we needed. I needed. What the story needed after Jotaro, I think he is yeah. fucking incredible for everything you you said. Um, but I do think ultimately <gasps> Jotaro is still my guy a little uh, bit more than Josuke. But again, so, so close. close. So yeah. we got Diamond is Unbreakable over Stardust Crusaders, but we got Jotaro slightly over Josuke. But we have Crazy Diamond above Star Platinum. Wow. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah, so it's, we're going back and forth. That's what I'm telling you. My heart has been, <laughs> I've been, I've been weighed down. I really liked. He came around for me, Koichi. I really like Reverb in that whole journey. Yeah, he's like a Reverb. What is uh, it called? It's, it's maybe not Reverb. Is it re it's actually Echoes? Echoes. That's what it is. Sorry, yeah. everyone. Oh, Wait, I just got uh, outed. I just got outed. I just got outed. Everybody clicked off the video. I'm. I know. It was like, I was sucks. watching, but it sucks. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. it happened. Like three people did. <laughs> And it does suck because, you know. You have to have duality sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, we work hard on these episodes, you know, and people are just like, I don't like the way you watched it. I'm I'm done. Which is, you're, you're right. Well, it's better than like, it's, I don't yeah. like how you look. You know, we get those a lot too. Not a lot, but we, we have got them. You know? That was like a joke. We have got them. I've got them in my life, in my own life. In real, IRL. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah um, real life comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, uh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, but you were saying you Koichi, like Koichi, yeah. yeah, Koichi stand, that whole thing. Um, and yeah, it was, you know, there was a lot of moments where it was just bizarre. Um, of course. Of course, but I feel like even more so, like, because it now was that set, first part, the first half of part four really got me. Because it was, got me. And yeah, I, was, I, I was, know. And I was ready to go after that. So when we jumped back into the second half, I was like, okay, you can't, you can't. You can't get me. I feel like in part three, it was like way more. It was like played more as like magical, mystical. I don't know, because they were like in like, like, you know, out, I don't know. They they weren't in like the a city where there's people like walking around. It's like casual. Like when these like crazy things are happening in this small town, it just feels so much weirder. Yeah, and, and I think that's, bizarre. that's yeah part of the it's by design. That's that's yeah. part of, I think, Iraqi's plan by setting it. Because again, he even said in that interview, when you set things like when you when you bring them down and, and make them, you know, more relatable or set them in a town and, uh, you know, things are happening in people's day to day lives. It, it, it feels crazier. It hits different. It and does it really does. Different. Yeah. And just having the main and like, cause again, at, at the beginning of the at the beginning of the, the part, um, we thought that this like guy, this like serial killer that was also like just he did a lot of bad things and you know exactly what we're talking about um and we thought that was going to be the main guy and then it was like oh it's another killer and yeah. i was like oh i i mean okay but i was not at all disappointed like no. kira is yeah. such a good antagonist like and we didn't know really anything about kira no. prior to the second half i yeah. mean he really and this is i think what is so masterful about like his introduction because like you said 
we are introduced to potential villains throughout, but always these villains get defeated by our heroes, by this, you know, group of friends. And it's not until later, halfway through, really, that mm-hmm. Kira comes in. And now you're not just invested in in the characters, but you're kind of invested in the town now, you know? Yeah, invested in the town. And also, weirdly enough, Kira, like, you know, not there's... Not me, dude. Kira's freaking weird, bro. I mean, he is weird, but he's weird. I, he's complex, and like, it is so well done that Araki was like, "Okay, we're gonna put this like bad guy, like mind you, like bad guy in the situation, and we're gonna have this, you know, this his, he's gonna have a new family, he's gonna have a wife, a kid, Brilliant and the move. kids onto him, and you're there's gonna be a part of you that's like." Oh, he almost got caught. Oh, don't get caught. Yeah. You know, you're always on the tip of your toes. Not like, I hope you, like, a part of you is like, I hope you get caught. But another part of you is like, <laughs> like, you better watch out, bro. Like, why did you lock that door? Why did you, like, it's just so funny that you're, like, kind of not wanting him to get caught. I don't, it's, is that bad? No, no, it's um, not bad at all. That's not bad at all. At all. You know what all. I mean? Like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I know what funny. you mean. I know what you mean. I know, and I, I, I that's, that's a part of a thriller. You know, you don't want him to get caught yet. You know, you're not. You know, you're not invested in him. You don't like him as a person, but he is an interesting antagonist, yeah. uh, a villain, because especially coming off of someone like Dio, who exactly. is just kind of like, not only is he evil, but he wants to conquer the world. He, he He's like, and I love Dio. I got a Dio figure. I love, love Dio. Dio. We love we Dio. We love Dio. But Dio is more like a, a carbon copy, not carbon copy, but he is, you know, more a, more of a generic sort of like. He's a villainous Evil villain entity, you know, yeah. kind of character. He's a little more complex, and you know, he has his his thing, and I and I love him for that. But I do think that Kira is so much more nuanced, and he has a lot more yes. kind of going on. And yes. he isn't somebody who wants to be like out and about. He is very quiet, very reserved. He is very like, and he he just wants to keep living his peaceful, violent life. Yeah, you know? yeah, and it's like. Almost like I mean we 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 said it before and like Kira is just like you know Rocky's like I'm just gonna put Jason Bateman in my in my anime in my manga in my anime because he is just like so similar to Jason Bateman even in the beginning when he's introduced and everyone in the office is like yeah we don't really talk to him he's kind of weird right and it just I was like dang this is it very From- Jason Bateman yeah. Um, you even noticed a Pet Cemetery reference, which was yes. really cool. Yes. And um, also, I think I heard this somewhere, you know, in doing, you know, some research before the episode. I, I think I even heard that maybe he based him kind of off of like a young Bowie, too. I, I, oh. I don't know. Because that was another thing, you know. That makes sense because, you know, music is <clears throat> a right. lot of the inspiration of the stand names. And, and names it's just, and uh, it's just, it's just. Not weird. I get. I, I I get why people might be a little um, upset, and I don't know how upset people are, but I do know there was a little bit of pushback on the art style of the anime as well, because oh. you know I, I I owned the first like four or five mangas of the the deluxe editions of part five now or four now. Excuse me. And <laughs> I was uh, like, "Dang, you already read it." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm prepared. <laughs> but you see the art evolve. You see it change, kind of like drastically. Yeah. By by the end, I mean. You know, we're we're com- we're in a completely different space than we were in part three. And it's in part four kind of starts there, but then changes. So, you know, David Productions, that studio was in like this weird sort of place where, you know, you have half the series that kind of still looks like part three. And then it's kind of evolving by the end of mm-hmm. it at the end of part four. And so they're like, you know, where are we going to go? They end up going with sort of the 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 style that uh, I think is closer to the style that Iraqi achieves later in the series. But in doing so, there were some people who were saying that Kira didn't look as menacing, but also charming um, as as he does in the manga. In the manga, he ha- he commands, I think, a little bit more of a of a presence, I guess, than he does. He maybe looks a little softer in the anime. Well, that than, could play to that could play to his advantage if he's trying to lay low. You for know? sure, like for that sure. is like he has a face that you would just like you know, pass right by, by, or he is, like, good-looking enough to get away with things, too, um, which is, like, that in-between, you know, you don't want, to like, people to, like, oh, that, like, super-duper, like, fucking hot guy. Oh, can I cuss already? Um, yeah, sorry. plenty of time. Um, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Bitch. I mean, not too much. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> um, you know, you, you don't like that, you know, for, for everyone to cause commotion around you, but you want to, you know, be handsome enough where you could be like, oh, can you 
get that for me? Can you forget about that? Well, that, that was you know? also what was so awesome about his character and his character development. And I'm just, you know, being dramatic myself and saying he's weird. I mean, he is weird, but... Um, he, uh, yeah. He no, is, no, no, but yeah. I was like, no, nah, fuck that guy. You know, he sucks, you know, whatever. But yeah. as, a, as an antagonist, as a villain, he's great. And that's what I loved about sort of the way Iraqi wrote him when they go to his house and they discover the photograph or trap his oh, dad God. in the photograph, whatever. But they see his trophies, they see pictures of him, and they see that purposely, purposely, this man was like, not underachieving, not overachieving. He was purposely just middle of the road. Mm-hmm. And even when he would take photographs in, in, for the yearbook or with friends, whatever, he would always kind of be a little bit in the back. Like this man, his whole life has never wanted to like get too much attention because, because he's always had these like urges and yeah. he always kind of, you know, uh, he wanted knew, to be able to you know sneak around. Yeah, he knew what you wanted to be when he grew up. <laughs> right. And who knows when his first kill was? Who knows? Yeah. They don't really say it, but... Because he was killing way before he got a stand. Exactly. Yeah, 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 Which is, like, crazy. And the fact that it's, like, it's in Morio, which he's never left Morio, and he's killing in Morio, and Morio's such a small town, and, like, no one's done anything about it. Like, I don't mean to be a dick, but Josuke's grandfather, what were you doing? Whoa, dude. RIP, sorry so- about that. I'm sorry, but there is a killer. There's been a killer on the loose for, he said, 15 years? It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> You're freaking riding your bike I'm around? I'm good. I'm that good. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> freaking riding your bike around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drinking whiskey, cognac after work. Yeah. There's a killer on the loose, okay? Yeah, I mean, he was. I'm he, sorry. I mean, he was. Well, he had, there was a lot of crime in Morio. I mean, he had a lot of people to worry about. Uh, and then cut to these people all get stands, and he's like, "What the fuck?" I mean, my job just got so much harder. I mean, he didn't no, he know di- that, he died. He died. Yeah, he, he died, died before, before he could that. really see all that yeah. happen, which honestly might have been for the best because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want him to see his town like that. You know, <laughs> it's been hard. It's been hard. Uh, it was his town. It uh. was very fitting, and we're you know these are our general thoughts. We got fun. You know, we just kind of recap everything. Then we go beat by beat, but it was kind of beautiful, and it was kind of fun. Um, seeing this guy with his, and, you know, I, I like the little um, mannerisms or the little like ticks or the little weird sort of obsessions that Kira had. His nails growing very fast, him having to trim them, him kind of associating that with a good kill. Um, these are all things that I that feel very like researched or feel like something a real killer would. Uh, yeah, be. because they're so weird, but so they're specific, so yeah. specific, but like. It's just like human behavior. Right. Like it is just like you clip your nails all the time. But like once you start saving them and like associating them with something else, then it's like a step further, you know? And yeah. that's it's so like, yeah, again, it's he's just like nuanced. And even like the, when he's like peeling his or biting his, right. you know, nails and stuff, it's just like, you know, a lot of people do that. But it is just and so even his weird. Obsession with hands, you know? Um, I, I, you know, I thought it was really Specifically cool. Specifically left left and i which you know left left hands are better than right hands and if you're a left-handed person then you're probably better than a right handed person <laughs> i just started a war just kidding we're all great um everybody except for right hander <laughs> except for that right hander <laughs> behind you right there um just kidding uh having a little fun come on uh, but my whole point was um yeah it felt very specific and i loved how they you know iraqi gave him all of these um you know, little obsessions, these little ticks. Uh, but I also love how he met his end, you know, by a bunch of hands. It was kind of poetic. Oh, yeah. And you know something I mean? also poetic, too, that I was like researching. Um, I would I, I would I would say you could interpret it. You could interpret it how, however you see fit. Um, but there was a line that was taken out from the, the anime. Um, and when he like finds out what has happened to him when he's in the ghost alley um, with Raimi. Yeah, yeah. Raimi. Um, he says, maybe maybe that won't be so bad after all. Maybe the peaceful life I seek for is waiting for me here. And I was just like, I mean, it implies that like, I mean, he has these like tendencies and he does want to kill. But at the same time, he's just like, I just want to chill. Mm. And he's like feeding into these things. So he's saying like pretty much like, OK, then like maybe my peaceful life is awaiting for me like once I've died. Like once I'm dead now, and I'm just like Jesus Christ. But it does look like he, get, he gets dragged to hell. Or, no, he does, he does. But or that's some sort just, of hand orgy or something. That's you just know, a, which could be his paradise. That's just a line before he before all that happens. But I was like, wow, that's a kind of powerful line that they decided to cut out because the yeah. implications are kind of yeah crazy. Because 
I don't that's know. Why the Maybe I'm thinking about is it too much. Always better. I don't think you could ever really think about anything too much. I mean, that's what people was that people a have, diss? No, no, not at all. You're crazy. People have whole channels where they you know think <laughs> about stuff for too much. You know, and they're successful, and good for them. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, a couple things too, I want to mention before we, we, before we start moving on is, um, there were some things that were not answered and that's fine, but I was kind of hoping and I almost, I want to be vulnerable and I, and oh. I, and I, I understand now, I think even more so, but Jojo has been a series that I have like completely fallen head over heels for and am in love with mm -hmm. and Part three was really the part that that sparked that, and it's just been a growing flame ever since. Okay, but I still sometimes have trouble like training myself, sort of how to watch it because, you know, for a lot of reasons. What do you mean? Um, just meaning that like not everything has to have this like crazy meaning, or not everything has to pan out and end up being this like significant thing later on. Maybe that just happened to ha and it and it happened. And maybe that's all it is, is something that happened. And we should all be like happy and enjoy the fact that it happened. And we got to see it happen. Um, and maybe there are still some things. Uh, it's not a diss. It's not anything crazy. I'm just saying like. You're so passionate. I am passionate because I love this series and I don't want my thoughts to get misconstrued. Um, <laughs> but. But. Uh, um, like for for instance. Uh, the Josuke thing, the Josuke and the Snow thing could just be. Oh, no. OK, so that's like a fan. That is a heavy, heavily implied, like everyone saw what you saw and everyone is theorized that like that's what it kind of was. So you're not alone in that. Right. You're not alone in that. And it's I not knew... answered, but I don't, I don't think it was ever confirmed. The, the community has theories on it. I do believe that Josuke comes back in a future part um, and plays a part in a future part. Wait, what? Uh, sorry about that. Um, Are you serious? Maybe, maybe not. Allegedly. I don't know. I'm freaking Kira, dude. Uh, I'll kill you. <laughs> so you don't hear anything. Um, oh, Stark. <laughs> well, you're cosplaying as like casual Rainy today. So I just thought, you know, we could kind of kind of like be in Do our Do you characters. see the scar on my back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All I'm saying is like. That and and there are times, and I understand, like when you're writing things like stands with abilities that are so complex and so creative, and really just a pleasure to read and watch. You're gonna sometimes like write yourself into these like little corners, and we have to, I have to, sometimes because overall, it's a series that I I, I am just so grateful to be enjoying the amount that I am mm -hmm. and and just consuming and having um you know uh, take me the way it's taken me, but. As a writer, I think you're going to write yourself into little holes and get yourself into these little corners sometimes. And, and it is frustrating to see because like and I wrote this down because, you know, sometimes it does feel like Josuke's power like works whenever it wants to. Not however it wants to, because it's very like clear how his power works. Mm. And there are very clear rules, which I love, but it works whenever it wants to. <laughs> like sometimes there would be there are so many situations where it just makes perfect sense. For example, and this is something you pointed out, and it really did like, and I get it for a joke, it's for a bit, I get it, but where do we draw the line, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it's coupled with one of the coolest uses of his power when he's on the bike. Yes. And he's, and he's racing down the street. And the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life, maybe, is when he uses Crazy Diamond to break all of the pieces of the bike apart, continue at the same speed, over this baby and reassemble the bike without dropping a, uh, a, a, you know, any, any a lick. you know, dropping any miles per hour, yeah. any MPH. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That was incredible. So freaking cool. I get it it's for a joke. It's for a gag. But this wasn't just the only time that this happened. Another another point. At another point, he grabs someone's cell phone and apparently grabs it too hard. And breaks it. Yeah, he's like, oh, damn, this cell phone's broken. And then he just stares at it, like, panicking. Like, what yeah. am I going to yeah, do? Yeah, what am I going to do? And then, like, tosses it and tries to find another cell phone. And he's, and like, I was sweating. Like, it's like, just, get, just, just fix it. Fix like, the just phone. Just fix, just fix the phone. Like, you just fixed the whole damn bike right now. And another part, too, I think you were going to bring this up, too, that I was like, I mean, maybe it isn't, I mean, okay. Um, when a small boy child 
Koichi. Ko- no, 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 no. Oh, the, the other whole, small the, 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 the hole in his face? No, no. There's a lot of small boy childs, I guess. Uh, the, the main small boy child. The, oh, the, right, right. The uh, Kira's new son. Yes, right. Kira's son. Quote, unquote. Yeah. Um, that's funny. You're just going down the yeah, list. Yeah. I'm like, I guess there are. Um, But yeah, when he gets blown up by Kira's power... He Josuke is able to touch him, and he's oh, able to right. go back into. He's able to survive, and I was like, "Your head exploded! Your whole body, your whole body, like, and your and your skull and your brain solidified. Like you just, you just, you just look like you turned into some sort of like rock, and then you exploded. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. And then just because Josuke can assemble all the pieces back together real quick. You're you're alive, and then That's Okuyasu were saying. meant to believe at the time. That's what was frustrating at the time. We're meant to believe Okuyasu's. I mean, yeah, uh, Okuyasu's like dead. Yeah, and he's like, I can't use my power, and I'm like, you just use your power. I don't know if Kira's. It was that, and okay, again, people <laughs> sometimes say take things and whatever. Like I, I love this series, and uh, that I know I love this series, and it is what it is. But you know, there are some p- points, I guess, not problems, but points throughout where I I had some you know minor minor um, issues, I guess. Mm. But again, who the fuck am I? Uh, <laughs> and, and another one was around that time too, you know, where uh, again, some infuri- it's like 90% amazing. 90%, 95, yeah. 95% amazing. Some of the craziest shit I've ever seen animated in my life. And then 5% like really frustrating. Like the other part <laughs> where um, Koichi is, it goes over to Rohan's house. Oh my gosh. And, and Rohan's like, uh, Koichi, I have a stand on my back. You know, don't Koichi, look at me. And he's like, I have a stand on my back. Well, I can't don't do it. that because then people really are gonna good. be like, no one knows who the fuck you're imitating because nobody watches the fucking dub because, you know, uh, the sub is superior and you guys suck. Just kidding. I'm sorry. I just have a little. Fu- I'm having a little fun today. I had a, too much coffee today, actually. Mo 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 radio. I think it's like mo 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 radio. You're such a dick. <laughs> the same thing. Um, but let's go. Let's let's talk about it because I know you were you were upset about it too. R- Rohan's in there like, don't look at my back. And, and Koichi's just like, you're playing me right now. You're fucking with me. You you always lie to me. You're you never tell the truth. And I know this could be a life threatening situation for you. And you do look like you're really stressed. But um, I'm just not gonna fall for it. And we're gonna like I I mean it's a reoccurring theme in JoJo, right? Like, do you think they're a stand user? Yeah. Yes. Every time. Let's just assume yes. Yeah, assume. Even when they're like, there's, he's like, Josuke, there's a stand user. Mm-mm. Excuse me. And Josuke's like, yeah, yeah, old man, whatever. You're so old and senile. I don't care. And it's like, uh, it's a stand. Yeah, it's a stand. It's I, always a yeah. stand. Like, it's always a stand unless it's an alien. And or that a ghost. Was, that was a highlight for me. Oh, that was a highlight too, but I'm, I'm not done. Sorry. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah, not, yeah, I'm sorry. not done. But yeah. Um, mm-hmm. He comes in there, you know, and like you said, he's like, you know, but in disbelief, like for a long time. And he's like, <laughs> he's begging him, like, please, dude, like, I'm in danger right now. And you guys are. And Koichi says, Koichi says, I, the only reason I came here is because there are two new stand users who are after us and they're trying to kill us. Like, he didn't just go over there to hang out and read the new chapter of his manga. He came no. over there to warn him about a stand user. And he's like, yeah, I think one of them's right here. He goes, no, you're fucking with me. You're lying. You're lying. And even when he has proof, he's like, look at this shriveled body. This tiny shriveled body. <laughs> and Koichi goes, I don't know how you did that. <laughs> but that's, you went real far, Rohan. <laughs> you went real far to props to you. I was like, God damn. And then, okay, of course, he gets a little suspicious. He starts following him around town, and then he does jump in to save the day a little bit. But. I mean, and also Koichi. Um, God, I forgot her name. Them getting together, actually, after the fact that, like, now that she has a kinder face, he's like, I'm down. You've changed. And I'm like, what is this? Her soul didn't change. Her heart didn't change. Like, right, 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 right. I mean, maybe she's learned her lesson, but, like, damn, he really took her back. Like, once she got that new face, he was like, See, oh, I, I, I don't go know gong. She, I don't know if she did learn her lesson because... She didn't. She was, she was literally being a terror throughout the whole thing. Especially, yeah, in the Cinderella episode, when Koichi apparently fell in love with her, she went back after the effects wore off and like was like really horrible to that woman. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and Koichi was like, "I don't, I love you." Yeah, and she, yeah, yeah. But also, like, that's fine. I mean, it, I mean, was, I get it, but like, bruh, like, the last thing I'll say, because again, the rest of this episode, you're gonna hear us talk about everything we loved about it, which was so much. 
Um, <clears throat> but the last thing I'll say is during that that last you could go. battle. Oh, you could go. Sorry. Thank you. No, that was important. Mm -hmm. Um, the the last battle was really cool, and was probably, in my personal opinion, a little cooler, uh, or maybe even a lot cooler than the final battle in in uh, part three. I agree because of uh, because of the twist. Because of the yeah. twist. I did not see that coming whatsoever. When we were watching it, I was like, oh, my God, he used it. Like, they're going to have to do this all over again, which I was, like, kind of excited about because it's it's cool. I like the Groundhog Day effect. Right. Um, but the fact that it didn't and he didn't even know. Like, I'm always a sucker for that, too. It's like, what do you mean I'm dead? Like, they don't know they're dead. And then it's like, yeah, well, you're dead now. But I will say the one con for me was that it, it did start to feel really convoluted. Like, it already, mm -hmm. like... I mean, I was on board by the end, and part of it was because, like, as I, as I was watching it, I was like, wait, what is happening? What? <laughs> and that's why, like, I'm glad, because we were initially supposed to record this, like, the day of or the day after we watched it. And I'm glad I had a couple more days to to really process it, because now that I have, like, a better understanding of everything, like, I do appreciate it and enjoy it a lot more. But at mm -hmm, the time, I was like, mm -hmm. bro, this is just, like, too much. Like, like mm -hmm. the most random thing kept getting added on top of another random thing that just, like, I, I I don't know, but I, I again I came around to it and I appreciate it and I understand it now and I and I and I loved it. But there was a moment during that fight. Which by the way, you know, Joe Toro and Rohan and Koichi and I I, I think that's it, are are around the corner. And there's not just one there's multiple explosions happening. They don't hear a damn thing. <laughs> but Joe Toro does hear something at one point. And the line that he this man delivers, which this man in every other part has been like in part three even in part four has been just really like on his toes about everything on his toes like really sleuthy you know like yeah. he's gonna get to the bottom of whatever's happening yes. like he knows he knows before you know that he knows like he he's on it and they are there to confront who they believe you know kira's new identity the son of kira's new identity whatever yes um and they're all waiting around and things things feel weird. Things feel off. They're not here yet. Where are they? <laughs> we were supposed to they were supposed to be here. And then they hear something. And Joe Turo says out loud, I think I just heard Josuke scream right now. <laughs> well, excuse me? And then he goes, and then he pauses like a second and then goes, nah, probably just the wind. And I was like, it's what? you. I mean, you have to. It's bizarre. You can't. Again, you can't get too mad at these things. It's it's anime. You know. I know. That's what I it know. Is. I know. And I love it. Has it has to. It has to. I mean, yeah. It just has to move the story forward. But yeah, that was that was hilarious. But it was, that was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it's almost as hilarious as the marine. You know, his marine biology. <laughs> oh, which yeah, yeah, yeah. Which um, that really we we really got a kick out of that. And yeah. yeah, it is because you know we were told that he. Was a marine biologist. We were told again because we did were told say again. it. Yeah, he did say it in the beginning, and we kind of forgot. And it's a very interesting career field for him. I didn't necessarily um, but forget. It's okay. I just still think it's funny. <laughs> I just even if he is a marine biologist, like I think it's think it's hilarious that the tone of the episode just kind of like changed. Because again, like it never really comes up ever again. It never came up before that, and it never comes up after that, except at the Sandlot ending at the end. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think it's just still funny when he just mentions it one time. Yeah, it's pretty funny. But there's a lot to love in Kira. Um, ended up being amazing. How do you feel Kira holds up to Dio in your book? I think you already kind of I like of Kira more. It, but, yeah. Yeah. I just like what Araki did. I mean, it was like you thought, I don't, again, the twists and the turns, like the whole new identity thing, like using an uh, already like known stand user that we've met in a previous episode to use, like forced to use their stand to help this guy out. Like he's just like on a rampage. Like it was just really, really cool. And it, it added a different level. Um, and obviously just added so much to the story that I was like super enthralled. Um, and yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Because yeah. we get like Dio's like second form when he drinks the blood of Jonathan, but Joseph. God, I always say Jonathan. Um, Joseph. Yeah. I wonder what I learn. Uh, Joseph. Yeah, but that was like, yeah. I mean, it's a power up, but this just felt like it. It was, you know, that's what killers do. That's what people on the run do. They, you know, dye their hair and yeah, they, yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, bleach their eyebrows or you know put prosthetic nose get plastic surgery all that stuff so it was pretty cool yeah ultimately i i, I like i said you know this is 
probably my favorite part um, of JoJo so far. And uh, those are just some things, uh, general thoughts and feelings. There's still so many things we have yet to talk about and yet to unpack. <laughs> I and know. All of them we will do our best <laughs> to to do, but we're going to try to do it in a timely manner. We're going to try to be respectful of your time as well. We don't want to be in a four-hour episode. People, Some people say they like it, but we're going to try to tighten it up and only spend Condense. time talking about the ones... Uh, the moments that we really, really enjoyed yes. and, and, and want to talk about more. Um, okay. So maybe we should just go through, um, I think like we did last time with the stands. Um, well, this season plays out a little differently, I feel like. You think so? I mean, the stands kind of put like benchmarks in between things that happen in the series. So They do. Know. They do, but I feel like it, I feel like they do more so in part three than they do in, For part, sure. in, in part four. Just to give us more of like a... Uh, Avenue I, I, because I get you. We'll be like, this part was really good. And I know. We'll, we'll, get, like a we'll two get sucked hour. in. <laughs> yeah. We'll get sucked in. Well, let's just try it and let's, you know. Um, so, where we left off was episode 20, well, where we started um, <clears throat> watching this time around yeah, was yeah, episode yeah. 20, which was the uh, Cinderella episode. Yeah. Which we've already kind of touched on. And this is setting up again mm -hmm. a device that Kira is going to be using later on. Yeah, I really like this episode. I really, really liked it. I really like Yukiko as a character in general. Um, and I was glad that she got more time. I thought she was just going to fall to the wayside um, uh, after her like little mini arc fight. Mm -hmm. So I was glad to see her again, even though she is kind of a brat. Um, and I just liked the overall vibe. Like, um, like Aya, like... The Cinderella, like it was just so, so sick. Um, such a sick ability. And I liked how she was just like fair, you know, she yeah. was just like a fair person and she did things based off of like her own moral compass. Like it yeah, was just did. it was just really nice to see. Um I like that too. That. She wanted to be like a fairy godmother. Yeah. Like I thought that was I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it was very cute and like wholesome and the end, like you know, the stakes were kind of like really like, damn, like if she does not get her face back, like she's not going to have a face. And then Koichi stepping in. And I think that she would have done something as it was because she just is like a kind person. I give you one more chance. Yeah. I really, really, really liked this episode a lot and uh, liked her as a character. Um, unfortunately, she doesn't make it all the way to the very end. What? Sorry about that. Are you serious? <clears throat> yeah. Why? Kira killed her. Wait, really? Come on. <laughs> um, so 21 is uh, Kira just wants to live quietly, part one, and then we have part two after that. Um, this is when we meet, really like officially, officially, officially meet Kira. And uh, mm -hmm. there's some weird things, man. I mean, I, I actually do like, because we were told in a comment that uh, in the anime, they decided to sprinkle the hands throughout, which I think is a really, really cool touch. I personally really like that choice. Mm -hmm. um, but I also get the argument that it was it was nice to maybe have it revealed midway through. But I, I, I enjoyed it. But speaking of hands, we get to see him get real comfortable with some hands. Uh, start oh, yeah. licking on them and poking in sandwiches. Public too, in, in public, too. In public, too. kind of brave, honestly. Very brazen. If he's like, I just want to blend in. I just want to fit in. Like, bro, like you have a severed hand. That probably smells. I mean, he even admits to himself later, like, yeah, this one's decomposing. Got to get rid of this one. Um, and yeah, just really suggestive material oh here. yeah very suggestive really suggestive so but um, the big part of it was uh shigechi um shigechi and uh um uh, i mean this two-parter really yeah, got me man. i think uh these two episodes might be my favorite i would have to say like if they're not my favorite they're really up there i do like the ending a lot but these are really up there they really are just like the whole like you know, the him switching the bags and him having the hand in the bag and Shigechi being him, just, you know, everyone's after me, everyone's trying to get my stuff, yeah. like that attitude and him and the gang just like, you know, in, try not to get caught. And like, I really feel like this like completely solidified to me, not just like we've seen Josuke and uh, uh, Okoyasu and their dynamic, which I love, dude. They're just bros being bros, having fun. <laughs> Um, being delinquents from time to time up to shenanigans, but but they, they have good hearts. And They're I teenage freaking, boys. I love them as a unit, as a duo so much. But this really solidified, like, since we last saw Shigechi in their whole, like, lottery <laughs> fiasco, like, where he fits in their, you know, friend group and how 
they still kind of are friends with him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> despite all this, like after that, which is again what I love about part four. People don't go away. They have to, you kind of have to, you kind of get to see how things end up playing out. Oh, yeah. Uh, and how he just kind of is there and he's still kind of an asshole, but they kind of know that and accept that now. And it really did a fantastic job of not changing Shigechi, who she, who he is at all, um, or even redeeming him, but really no. like making you realize who he is. Okuyasu and Josuke accept him for who he is, so you kind of do too. And you really, it does a great job of like making him feel a part of their, you know, friend group, even if he has a weird place in it. Mm -hmm. So when he does ultimately get got by Kira, Bite the dust. Yeah, it breaks. Your heart, it broke my heart. We were both like, what? Because it, yeah. it was it played so tragically. Yeah, it was really crazy. It was really crazy. And we, you know, we thought we're like, oh, he got away. Like he got away. And there's like no way Kira's gonna let him go away. Cause he knew exactly who he was. Well, I mean, yeah, I I I that that moment, because I think uh this is even okay, now we're getting into to a sheer heart attack part two, I believe, uh, because I guess this is how they divide it up. So it's sheer heart attack part one, sheer heart attack part two. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but this is when, um, again, we see that moment and we see Harvest, which I believe is Harvest. Let me just say. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yo, yeah, you want to check. Yeah, <laughs> oh, well, yeah, it is. I, it is. I have to check. Uh, harvest. Yeah, one, only one Harvest with the, the button. The little button. Yeah. And when he's outside of the classroom banging on the I door, know. like, oh, my God. I know. He's like, Jessica. And then he just, like, dies. And there's, like, yeah. literally no remnants, no evidence, just, like, completely obliterated. And he says that a lot. He says, Kira, I'm going to completely obliterate you. And I laughed the first time he said it until I saw a stand. And I was like, oh, no, he means it. Like, he'll yeah. do that. Like, yeah. obliterate you. Yeah. Um. And, yeah, and now yeah. I realize why I was a little confused because it has the uh, Japanese title and then I think it has the uh, English or the dub title uh, okay. next to it too. So I was Got like, why, it. Why, is it, why does it keep saying it twice? But it's kind of different. That's why. Uh, I didn't question apologies. it. It's Jojo. You know? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of names. Uh, but yeah, this is when we do get to see Jotaro and Koichi. Now, again, this is what you're talking about, you know, uh, Jotaro sleuthing. We get to see him with the button kind of going around asking questions. Like that episode too. Great episode. Great episode. And Koichi having to learn a lesson. Like, yeah. you know, not necessarily do what you're told, but like you're capable and, and you know, you're, you're, you're a good, you're a good fighter or you're a good person to have on our team. Like you don't need to go out and prove yourself. Like you just need to be a team player and kind of be a team player and like really think and think before you think process it. Yeah. Before you start screaming and yelling. Cause at the beginning of the episode, the part, you know, one episode we're like, damn, like, Koichi, like 10 steps back, like you need to just chill. And then he, you know, ultimately really, really, really thinks it out and is really tactful. Tactful. Tactful, yeah. Tactful. Oh, yeah. God. Tactful. And, uh, yeah. 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 I really like this, these two episodes too. Pretty, pretty crazy. Um, I, I the reason, I mean, one of my favorite parts is like when, Kira, when Kira gets caught, like Kira gets caught by uh, Josuke, and he just says like, "Oh, you know, he, you heal me, that heal me, heal me." Crazy. And he's just like, "I never, you, you have that much faith in me as like a high school kid to heal all of your wounds right now? Like, you're full of shit. Like, you're full of shit." And I was like, "Oh my god!" Because I thought he had him. I thought they were gonna be so gullible. Um, I thought Koichi was for sure dead. Um, I thought Koichi was pretty dead too. Yeah. Jotaro, I mean, I know he can handle it. Even though him saying, like, this stand is like, I can't, I can't even put a dent in this stand. Like, that, that was kind crazy. of hard to believe at I know. first. Because I was like, I know. How, dude? Like, really? How? I know. Um, But okay, yeah, I guess so. Damn. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I thought he was dead too. And, and like you said, like, this is when I think, okay, we're having this big Kira confrontation. I mean, Kira even. Kira conference. <laughs> yeah, Kira conference. <laughs> Kira even goes so far as to like chop his hand off. Yeah. To be able to escape. And uh, they use the hand to kind of like guide. This is what I love about Josuke's ability, like his stand ability. They use the hand to kind of guide them back to wherever Kira is. And and just like you, I'm thinking like it, it can't be this easy. Like, But again, didn't, didn't Okuyasu's hand get torn off too? 
And they did the same thing. But he, they, it, he brought him to him. Uh, yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, so again, one thing you gotta let slide because that did happen. They they he were able to pull. Him, yeah, they, they wouldn't to, have to go in there and get him. Yeah, it was kind of really literally like the same thing. Um, I don't know. I, I can't tell you. I can't tell you why that happened. <laughs> oh, Yikes. but yeah, that was a really cool moment. I mean, it was. It was. It, it was. was. And then to find that he snuck into the the shop and and uh, switched his face and he killed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the Cinderella stand user and this other random guy and is kind of like inhabiting his skin. And yeah, body. and he really is committed. You he know, has he, to be. I mean, he just could have ran away. Like, such a cool... That's another thing I, I was going to say, you know. And again, I, I, this is like, I, this is some serial killer shit, I, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, really not wanting to leave their this town or this territory spot. and yeah you know, this territory like not wanting to feel like you're being chased out or someone else is telling you you can't be where you want to be uh, the sense of control like mm -hmm. i do get that but you're right like there was a part of me at a certain point that was like you know you could just go anywhere and they'll probably never find you they'll probably never find you but you know yeah he was really committed yeah um <clears throat> so that leads us through uh Episode 24, which is Sheer Heart Attack, part two. Then we get into 25, Adam Hart, father. Um, so this is when they start going through uh, Kira's house. And again, beautiful moments throughout this episode. I think just the device that Kira's father ends up being. The literal device, yeah. He yeah. comes out of a device, like a Polaroid camera. But that whole thing was so We're like, sick. Hermit Purple! And I was like, oh, that's <laughs> not Hermit Purple. Damn it! Yeah. Uh, I like the... I, I mean, I would have liked if it was definitely confined to that. Ep he lived in that episode, and then he was, you know... Uh, pinned to the 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 frame of the house and that was it and that was that but it was because so josuke got i mean jotaro got him dude he it, got I know, him a I know. picture of a picture and they wrapped him up and that was sick that, that was, was sick awesome. that whole fight was really cool but at the same i mean akira's like i mean kira's just been talking to his dead dad like and his dead dad has a he loves his son yeah to the point where i'm like you're proud of him for doing this shit. Yeah, like, I mean, even I get that, I guess. There are serial killers' parents who, like, go visit them and stuff. I mean, I guess I get it. I don't have kids. I don't know. I'd like to think that if my kids started murdering people, I I, I mean, I don't know what I, how I... I mean, I would not like it. I would feel very <laughs> bad about it. I would hate yeah, it. I don't, but oh, I don't know sick. how... I, I don't you're know. Sick. I mean, uh, would sick. I hate my... I mean, I feel really, like, you're kind disgusted of, by my by my child. Yeah. But, like, would I, like, hate them and never want to see him again? I don't know. Maybe. Probably. I, Jeez, I would like to think dark. so. It's getting dark. It's getting really dark in this episode. <laughs> Mario! So, uh, yeah. that's, a, that's a hard question. Yeah. Probably, I probably never talk to my son again. Okay. Yeah. I'm assume sorry. Assume that you had a son. Well, I would assume my daughter what, would. daughters can be serial killers too? Uh, my, I'm assuming that my daughter would be better at it and she would have never got caught. <laughs> <laughs> but my dumbass son would have got caught. <laughs> In this crazy imaginary <laughs> yeah, yeah, land yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of Josh's, uh, you know. Serial killer offspring. Yeah, serial killer offspring. That's yeah. what you think you'd put out into the world. That's interesting. No, I'm just saying if. <laughs> I'm just saying if. Because it's a complex thing. You know, I'm just trying to, you know. But I'm all I'm saying is, like, I get why his dad, you know, he loves was him just, still. Yeah, he was very, I mean, yeah, just on a bird. Takes a flight on a bird. And has an arrow, and it's just like and that's another thing. There's more, more than one arrow, which I I hope that comes back into play. Yeah, because that was very like, because like it, why it, couldn't it have just been why couldn't it have just been like there's st we didn't get all the stands yet. We got the arrow, we got the bow and arrow, but there could be more stand users out there on Morio. It, it could have easily been that. And I mean, this is just like a this would be a cool like just like a thing that I thought of like a headcanon. Like what if like Kira like Kira, Death Note. What if there was a Misa situation where there was like a fan of Kira's work that was working, not like Kira didn't even know that they were working for them, mm -hmm. but was doing it, doing his bidding, you know, right. trying like to like a, not get him caught. Like a copycat killer kind of thing. Like a copy, not, I mean, even he wasn't even doing, they, they weren't even doing the killing, but it was just like, I'm going to, you know, stand, stand up and stand out uh, with right. <laughs> shooting people with stands. Um, right, right. Yeah, but I, I you do, understand. I mean, I that is just I'm just writing my own fan right, fiction right. here. That could have been, uh, could have been anything but this man. 
I, I again, I, I totally get get it because he. I do love how he's flying around in a photo, <laughs> holding an arrow like on a bird with a string. Like it's funny. He's but just, to be in like yeah. so many episodes and be like, okay, here's the next villain. Oh, you defeated defeated that one. It's, here's another villain. Like it was like it's like so you convenient. Said, they could have just been out there. And, yeah. And they, they just didn't know, and then they start coming across him because stands were attracted to each other. You know, whatever, whatever. It was just so convenient that he was like relaying information and like telling Kira everything he needs to possibly know about what's going on um, with everyone trying to find him like Rohan like he's like Rohan knows and he's on to your case I'm like god damn it just let things unfold man yeah you know, you know yeah, that, yeah. that was the only thing that was kind of like frustrating for me uh, well but, he did let things unfold I mean that's how he got out you know his the p- picture unfolded sick that was really good that was <laughs> really good oh I wrote I wrote one down too um, oh my gosh Ita, this was a great part. Okay. You get it? We can end on that if you want. Like Josuke. Higashkita? Yeah. yeah. Oh, like, my. oh my gosh, Kita. Oh my gosh, Kita. This part was great. Yeah. Uh, we can end on that, yeah. Just want to say before I forgot. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Um, But again, yes, this is this, the dad thing was like to keep everybody busy. Um, <laughs> Meanwhile, Kira's busy... Being like making this woman fall in love with him and like being real, like she's dripping, like yeah, getting this she's getting this drippy. girl hot and bothered, yeah, you know. Yeah, she the, the whole house is a puddle at this right. point. Yeah, she's like wet floor signs everywhere. Yeah, like um, a, like a like a snail, like a like a slug right. anywhere she wants. Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> They didn't show that in the anime. No, that was manga. Um, that yeah, was that manga. was manga only yeah, exclusive. Manga only, yeah. But yeah, she was, she was, I mean, it was looking real bleak for her life. She was not happy with it at all. She hated this she, man. She hated her life. She hated this man. She hated her child. I mean, it was just yeah. enveloped in hatred. And she just um, needed to get fucked. Yeah, I don't think they did that. <laughs> I don't think they did yeah. either. He's, he's a- like Jason Bateman. Like, he doesn't really... You know what I mean? Like right, he, right, right. Yeah, he doesn't. He's a, yeah. He he's, just got time for that. Yeah, no. He's like he's like a he. He'll do it, but only for like you know to make himself feel good, not to right. But then actually, he, but like it'll good. take him like a long time yeah, like to flexing finish. Flexing and flexing right. in the mirrors, like oh yeah, yeah. It took him a long time to finish, and he won't. He'll like have to force himself to, and he won't probably yeah. enjoy it at all. But if he takes one of like the severed hands and just one touch, one done. touch, one done. touch, done. That's like, what. Instant, That's, yeah. instantaneous. He would rather do that. He's like, damn, yeah. why do why do people have to have bodies? Yeah, you know, why it's can't just, they just have like be hands? Like, he probably likes, you know, um, what is it, cousin it or thing, whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's probably really, really big fan. Well, I mean, he said his, his sexual awakening was the Mona Lisa. Which that was pretty wild too. Yeah, he goes. He said, "I had a rock hard cock." He did say that. Yeah, he said cock. He said rock hard cock. He said cock. And then he just zoomed in on the picture of the Mona Lisa's hands, yeah. and he just like framed that. Yeah. Which I mean, you know, I mean, if he wouldn't have done all the killing and stuff, I mean, fuck it, you yeah. know. Yeah, she's an attractive woman. I I get. I mean, I get, I mean, honestly, that's so like, fucked up. That like a, the, the that Mona a, Lisa, like really, is, she, is, is the Mona Lisa attractive? Yeah. She's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, everybody's beautiful, Bro, but like, oh, stop! You're so disrespectful. If I was at a bar and the Mona Lisa walked <laughs> up and was like, "Can I get your information?" <laughs> and I was, <laughs> and I was single. That's how people hit on people at a bar. Um, can I get your information? And I was single. I'd say, I have a girlfriend. Wow. To the Mona Lisa. Wow. Because I wouldn't be disrespectful, but yeah. I'd be like, oh, I'm so sorry I have a girlfriend. Even if I didn't, I would say that. Wow. Yeah. To the Mona Lisa. Sorry. Leave a comment down below. A smash or pass <laughs> the Mona Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> she aight. She aight. Uh, anyway, um, this episode was... Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty so, wild. Where do we leave off? Okay, that was the father episode. Yeah. Uh, then we got, mm-hmm. uh, oh yeah, the junkin, junkin boy is coming to the rock paper scissor one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be hundred percent honest. This was a fun episode. It, I mean, Rohan got his shine. It was cool, I, and I did come around a lot more to Rohan. I, I really actually liked this episode, but I just don't. You know, we don't have to take too much time. Like, it was cool, mm-hmm. but it was just, you know. It had an it had an emotional kind of climax, you know, the moment when we find out that this young boy just wants to, is trying to prove that he's better than Rohan, so he can accomplish 
and be successful and even more successful than Rohan. It was a good episode, but but not my fave. Not my fave. Yeah, not, not my, my fave. fave. Um, which leads us into episode twenty-seven. I'm an <gasps> alien. I really I like this episode a lot, dude. But Miki Taka, like, oh my gosh, like. This character came out of nowhere and I became instantly obsessed. He's just so adorable. He's just so sweet. He's down for whatever. And he's just, yeah, he's just down. Like that's the best way I could explain him. He's just and, and I love the I love the mystery of like, is he an alien? Is he not an alien? And and you really believe it and then it kind of gets debunked, but then it's like, oh no, I'm just uh brainwashing her to think that this is my mom. And right. I'm like, what is real and what is not? But it was yeah. it was an amazing ride throughout the whole thing. Number one, I want to say he's an alien. Okay, I think so too. He's an alien um, in my mind. But I also expected this to be like again a whole thing. This is another part of like training myself to really watch JoJo or just really accepting it for what it is and loving it for being what it is. Something completely different from so many other things because you think. This would be like earth shattering sort of information. I mean, they are aware of stands and every time they come across a stand user, it's like blows their mind. And it's also simultaneously the farthest thing from their mind. <laughs> uh, sorry, oh. Luffy. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but, uh, but an alien, they're like, I don't know. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't anyway. And they just kind of like, yeah. He can shape shift and do all these things. They maybe think it's a stand ability, but then he can't see stands or he's pretending not to be able to see stands. Yeah. So like, but in my mind, he's an, that, that, that boy is an alien. That boy, that boy is an alien. And the rest of this part too, like, you know, immediately Josuke again with his character. It's so like, you know, Araki like knew what he was doing when he wrote him. You could feel that he like knows who this character is. Like what would be the first thing that Josuke would do yeah. with like finding an alien being like, you know, not tell anyone about it. Uh, you know, not ask them like what's out there, what's going on. No, just like, can you like transform into dice and I can beat Rohan and I can just get a shitload of money from him because I know he's fucking loaded. Like yeah. so hilarious. What I loved about these two episodes and it ends up kind of being a two parter. Um, which in the anime, it did leave on a weird cliffhanger, but, you know, it still was, like, <laughs> amazing. It completely juxtaposes and sets apart Jotaro and Josuke. Because oh, yeah. Because we both get to see how they gamble. And, and it kind of informs, like, kind of who they are. Yeah. Jotaro being this, like, stone-faced bluff machine. And Josuke just sweating and panicking. And I love seeing the dice, like, throw up out of the little <laughs> hole. I mean... This was, and then on top of all that, you got Rohan, who's like so, like his ego, he cannot let Josuke get any sort of upper hand on him. No way. To the point where he's even like, like uh, uh, cutting himself. No, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and mutilating himself. His finger, he chops his finger off. And yeah, yeah. to the point, yeah, uh, exactly. And uh, it's just so, it's so hilarious. It's so hilarious. It's even like the alien, like he doesn't really explain like, you know, when people gamble and they're too good, they're right. going to assume that you're cheating or they're going to know that you're cheating. He didn't say that at all. He just said, like, just I need this and this is how I'm going to roll. And he just rolls the best rolls every time. And yeah. that leads Ron to be like, OK, this guy's for sure cheating. And even how I, I apologize, I forget his name, but even how he brings the other Miki like Taka. the lock. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I he brings I the miss, lock I stand miss user. Him. Back uh, into it. Um, Kobayashi. Tamami. Tamami. And yeah, man. Like, it was just so cool. This dynamic. Again, This these moments are mm -hmm. what really nudge, um, you know, Stardust Crusaders out of first place and 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 uh, makes uh, Diamond is a Breakable number one in my mind because these moments where we get to see these characters interact with each other outside of battles, outside of all these other pressing matters, and just see how they bounce off one another and see how Rohan has just like grown to hate Josuke so much with like a burning passion. And to see Josuke panic, but also at the end of all of it, by the way, this alien is like allergic to sirens, which is crazy. But at the end of all of it, like Josuke wins and <laughs> Rohan's house burns down like crazy. I mean, it's just so much fun. It's yeah. so much fun. Like I really actually liked these episodes a lot. It was 
it was amazing. Yeah, and I, I did really like how it's like your main characters. Like, there's people that you know think that even Joe Tro, like even the police are like, yeah, this kid's an asshole. Like, this kid's yeah. such an asshole. And there's people that like st- stand up for him and like like him. Uh, but there's just one character, Rohan's just like, I don't like you. <laughs> like, I really don't really vibe with you. And jo- Joe's kid's like, okay, I mean, I guess we just don't get along. Um, and that's why he tried to dupe him. But yeah, such a fun episode, such a crazy episode. And I just I just love this alien boy so much. What a what a what a what a pleasure it was to meet this character. Absolutely. Um, and, and he even co- kind of comes back in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, then we then we move on to Highway Star Part One and Part Two, which is the tunnel situation where Rohan mm-hmm. sees something. But then again, the carryover um, Rohan still being pissed at Josuke about his whole house, not being able to figure things out like this, really informing Rohan. Uh, Rohan's character and how he sort of treats Josuke and how mm-hmm. they bounce off of each other in this moment and situation. Uh, he sees something in this tunnel um, <clears throat> and then, you know, Josuke doesn't believe him, but then goes back to check up on him again, showing you that despite everything, like Josuke just has a heart of fucking gold, dude, mm-hmm. a heart of diamond. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> this leading Josuke down this path to find the person, the stand user who has Rohan, because Rohan is like, his nutrients are being sucked from him and he's gonna, his nutrients are being sucked from him and he's about to, he's about to, you know, die effectively and even Rohan in that moment and Rohan has a couple moments like this where despite what you might think about him or how you might feel about him or even how he comes across, he really, whether it's pride or, or, or some sense of just like nobility that he has, like he really, is always willing to sacrifice himself for others. Like he did it with Koi. He's done it with Koichi. Like he does it here with Josuke when he tries to get Josuke to not come in the room. Mm-hmm. He's like, do not come in here. Like Josuke run, like go. And of course Josuke does, but this leads him on a, on a hunt um, <clears throat> to find the stand user who's sucking nutrients from people and he can't stop. He has to keep moving at a certain miles per hour while this is happening. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, feet. If you're into feet, you'll love this one. Oh, uh, if you're into hands, feet. This is your your oh, part. Oh yeah. Um, this was a fantastic couple of episodes. Uh, again, for the motorcycle moment alone, disassembling, reassembling, mm-hmm. even just seeing him think and build the wall yeah, and all that stuff yeah. was just really cool. And also the result. I mean, this guy is just this like thug biker who's yeah. like all messed up from a drunk driving accident and all of his like groupies are with him and he you know he's just like you wouldn't beat up a, a guy who's already injured and he's like yeah you're right like I have pride I, I'm a good guy and he's like, see like good and he just heals him and I knew that was gonna happen I was like yes and he's that like I'm not gonna beat the so shit out of you awesome man yeah that was probably what was the other moment you said that was kind of like that uh, oh, with Kira, when Kira was like coming up to him, it's like, heal me, heal me. And, you know, Josuke has that badass yeah. moment where he's like, you know, you expect a kid to heal your, uh, yeah, heal, heal your wounds. Doesn't um, make sense. This was probably way more badass. I didn't see it coming. But when it happened, I was like, oh, yeah, of course he would say that and do that. But it was like, fuck yeah. It was such a yeah. fuck yeah moment. He's like, you're right. And then, yeah, he was fine. And I'm going to beat you back, <laughs> you know, uh, into this hospital. It was just, oh, man, it was so sick. Um, then we move on to cats. Love <gasps> Yoshikage Kira. Love it. Yeah, this was a little. This was a little callback to Stephen King's Pet Cemetery because the cat was the same kind, right? This cat was the same kind. I think it was a. It's a. It's a British. Let me see. I have it right. Yeah, British short hair. Um, in Pet Cemetery, there's a British short hair named Church, and he does get buried and then comes back to life. So yeah. that was a cute little sprinkle in there. I liked it. But it, in its own completely yeah, I did not expect it. JoJo way, does it come back? It did, comes back as a plant. Did not expect the plant. That threw me for that threw <laughs> me for a loop. Yeah, cat plant. Yeah. Um, and even that, this was a cool episode. Again, we get Kira. We see him trying to sort of, you know, keep everything together. These weird shenanigans are starting to happen. Uh, his new wife sort of stumbles upon this cat plant. Well, mm-hmm. cat at first, <laughs> and then this. Cat once it's a plant blows her toenail off because he's he, mad. Yeah, yeah, and he's trying to like keep everything together, um, and he does. And this was a fun episode. And the cat plant comes back in a big way. In a big way. In a big way. In a big way. Like best friend, like back. Like he really does like lay it down for yeah. him, and and he is the main reason why he's so he becomes so much more formidable. But it also gets kind of turned on him. <laughs> it does. It does. 
Uh, well, it gets turned on him first, and then I and think then, he uses it. Yeah, yeah. a page. lot, yeah. a lot, yeah, a lot, yeah. But uh, yeah, so then crazy. We get into July fifteenth, which is over the course of I think what four episodes, four One, episodes, two, three, four. All of these events happen over the course of the fifteenth of July, and this is where things start cooking. This is when it gets let him cook. Pretty freaking crazy, and so. Yeah, we're going to kind of try our best because it gets, it's kind of all over the place in terms of, of Kira's new ability, but we'll get there when we get there. So, this is when, you know, uh, Hayato mm-hmm. realizes that, that Kira catches him kind of in the act. It, it, like, completely in the act. Completely uh, in the act. Finds out that he is not his father. Has hard evidence that it is not his father. Gets it on tape. Even that was kind of a weird move for Kira. When he's like, <laughs> and th- I think this is just indicative of like mysteries or you know thrillers because you kind of start wondering like, well, why didn't someone just do this or why didn't they just do that? But when Kira sees Hayato running away yeah. at the very end, and he's like, what's is that Hayato? What's Hayato, he- this isn't his way from school. What's he doing over here? What's he? What's he doing? And then he realizes, oh, and then shit. he even sees he has a camera in his hand. Yeah, and he goes, and he goes I wonder if. <laughs> no, there's no way. There's no way to know for sure yeah. if he if he got anything on camera. And I was like, I mean, just assume, dude. Yeah. Assume yeah, that he for did. Real. But I guess he, in his mind, he's like, you know, how would he put any of that together? Then they have this weird, awkward bath moment, bath scene. Oh, moment, that was crazy. Which was crazy. Yeah. Which was very, very intimidating. I will say, power move on Kira's part. Power for sure. move. Power move. Um, <clears throat> this made me very uncomfortable, and and you bring up you brought up a good point. Again, this is just indicative of thrillers and 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 all these things, mysteries, sort of you know, the, these types of stories. Mm. Because even when he's holding the tape in the bath, you know, you're like, <laughs> I get it. This is like valuable, and he doesn't know what Kira's capable of. He doesn't know if maybe he thinks if he hides it, Kira will find it, or he'll mm-hmm. misplace it, or it'll disappear. Maybe he feels like he has to hold on to it. But it's also like, why did you take it in the bath with you, dude? This is such a weird place to. Because he had to. He had to. Because he knew that his dad was snooping around, or his dad was snooping around. He bury said, it, you know. I mean, maybe he thought it, he would be following him. He would be seeing. Yeah, him, so yeah. He's like, I just want to keep it. Yeah, close. 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 But I mean, this all happens, and we could talk about it too. This was probably like it was cool, but at the part one of this episode is when they see that whole. Um, I believe that whole. Uh, what is it called? What what would you what would you say? A telephone? Oh, the tower. The tower. Yeah, this is before that happens. Before all of that happens, um, with Kira and they they find this tower and he looked like a leprechaun. Honestly, yeah, bro, when this I was, first saw him. was this was even bizarre this by was, JoJo standards. Yeah, this dude. was super bizarre, and I was like, ah, hey, this is cool, yeah. Uh, but there was just this tower fight of this guy living in a tower, and you find out that he can't escape the tower because the tower is actually like his stand ability and it just does whatever it wants and he doesn't have any control over it it's not his stand ability necessarily well this is what i did find interesting it was his it was his stand yes and this is the same thing with um there was another stand created by the arrow and i and i wonder if we're going to see more of this Mm. a stand with with its own free will because we got to see that with the stand that is um on rohan's back piggyback yeah. yeah piggyback that they they the arrow was able to create stands that can exist separately from their humans and mm. um, or their partners or whatever and are just independent and exist on their own, which was pretty uh, crazy because this seemed like a concept that Iraqi was maybe playing around with. And I wonder yeah. if he's going to really, really go all in on that because mm. uh, we, we see two of them and, and it was piggyback and then it was the tower, which existed separately from its like user, quote unquote, or whatever. Mm. Uh, but yeah, sorry, I didn't want to cut you off go ahead no yeah i mean this was okay this was cool um my boy my alien boy gets a moment that was pretty cool pretty sick um and we get to see josuke also with okiyasu like really using teamwork to figure it out which was cool um with, like counting hits and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> and that yeah. was that was funny he's like yeah i saw the whole thing that you did this 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 i think four or whatever uh which was interesting but it this was... was definitely not the standout yeah super fly Superfly is what is it, it was. Called. It was just kind of weird to me and bizarre by JoJo standards because, again, you know, you do meet this character that, like you said at first, like, okay, he does kind of look like oddly like a leprechaun. Okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I'll he was another that. alien that's, or something. Yeah, I thought he was another, it, yeah, pointy ears. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. This whole time, he's walking around doing his thing. And I think this was split up over two parts, too. 
two episodes. He's like doing his own thing. And I think in the manga, they, they might have fucked with the order for the anime for this. Um, but he, he, there's no line between like his neck and his body. Um, Before you, know, you he, realize it. And then, then, yeah, there's this like kind of big reveal. Like he's wearing a mask. And then at that, from that point on, he has a- you can see that thing around his neck, which I appreciate, I guess, as a device. Like, you know, you're seeing what the character's perspective believes you know yeah i mean like and then when it's when they figure it out you find it out at the same time yeah i mean just give him a mask from the beginning you know give him a cool a cool mask before you know like give him a just give him a mask like give him a mask that doesn't look like a face you know what i'm saying like just give him a a burlap sack or something and then when he takes it off you know he's actually you know because well who is he like they didn't know who he was and that's my i guess my point and and back to to describe but like training myself that's what masks do that's what masks do they they hide your identity so why would he need to hide his identity for by looking as a leprechaun you know (laughs) (laughs) well he was hiding it was an identity hidden without the intention of ever being revealed and it never being revealed so it was like why wear a mask at all like and maybe i don't know maybe it will be re- revealed in a later part but it was never revealed it yeah was like, it was when when he took off he took it off no he did not yeah he did because he looked kind of like not as handsome the mask made him look more of like a handsome leprechaun and then he took it off and he was like less handsome he had like you know patchy hair if i'm remembering correctly i think and i could be wrong i've been wrong on this podcast many times before he, i think he did but i, I thought because he, he does lose his hair and his hair gets kind of yeah. you know mangled but it still looks like he's wearing a mask and you see the eye holes in the mask still it looks like the the mask itself because it was hair the hair is a part of the mask mm. that the hair of the mask got sort of like oh, fucked like up messed up hmm. but my whole point is and i could be wrong and if, if i am wrong that changes things but yeah i was like who is this person and why introduce a character with a mask if it doesn't matter who they are <laughs> you know like <laughs> I, it was just so yeah I'm, bizarre for jojo standards i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure he got demasked but i may be remembering different neither here nor there i mean was it a cool episode because the alien got a moment josuke and okoyasu have a moment awesome but it, uh, amongst everything else yeah not a not a standout episode yeah 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 it was cool moments, but yeah. Yeah. So thank you for bringing me back to that point. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, like we were talking about before July 15th, when all this stuff between Hayato and Kira and everything starts picking up. Yes. And this is where that character gets introduced with the piggyback and he goes into Rohan's house. That guy gave me weird vibes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah weird yeah, yeah, yeah. vibes. That guy made me very uncomfortable, uh, but he was just like scared for his life. Of course. Um, so uh, anyone would have weird vibes. <laughs> And I think, I, think I, I could be wrong, but I, I think that that guy, I think they said that he did birth, the stand was birthed through him, but then ended up like being able to exist separately. I don't know how much of this is going to matter. So I'm just <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, uh, either way. Yeah. He gave me the, 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 the willies, this guy, yeah. and then his stand was creepy as hell too, but it was an awesome episode. Yeah. I really liked it. Koichi, and this is, I, I've said this about JoJo before, and, and it remains true, but people handle their own shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I love that. Like, Koichi shows up to help Rohan when he's like walking down the street, having to go back to back, having to use um, his stand to force someone not to turn around. Mm. Uh, it was just so awesome, so yeah. creative. Koichi using echoes to help out but then for rohan to say like it, i'm here i'm where i need to be using the alley and the hands placing koichi <laughs> like where he needs to be to look at his back i mean yeah i can see maybe how Araki reverse engineered all of this but i mean watching it all play <laughs> out and seeing it as it's happening was really a treat it was a it was awesome i really liked yeah. it a lot yeah i did also you know those so funny the dog and the cat bit was really funny oh, yeah. um but yeah the ultimate and a lot of people i mean this this alley this ghost alley the hands that you know three times in the whole the whole season so yeah i we just got to see it in different ways which was cool and who knew it would come back in the end to play I such know. a big part? I, mean, I guess it makes sense. You know, and it doesn't. It's kind of right there. But that's what 
that is what is so amazing about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in Iraqi as a mangaka is because he does things so like in any other thriller mystery, you assume like what matters or you start to pick up on, okay, this is an important piece of information. But it's almost like at a certain point, Iraqi kind of like makes you give up in the best way. He's like, I don't, I feel like I can, I never know. Mm. where anything is going to go. So I kind of do just at, at a certain point surrender. Like he makes me, <laughs> forces me sometimes to surrender. And so when all these things happen, um, they catch me off guard and I really enjoy them for just what they are. And it's like a yeah. really awesome thing that only Iraqi has been able to do. Only Iraqi has been able to do this specific thing to me personally. Um, But anyway. July 15th. We talked about the bath scene. Talked about the bath scene. How could we forget? You want to talk about it again? And the... And the... Just, I, oh, I know it's you your joking? favorite scene. Shut up. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, because you get to see Kira. I did. Yeah, uh, I did get to yeah. see that. Yeah, I yeah, did yeah, get to yeah, see yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. And Kira's... I mean... That was that, nice. That's a body upgrade. I don't know if he was putting work into yeah, the... Yeah, I know. The other one. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, because his body... I think... Was it his body or was it just his face? And his head. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, that's I think a good it point, was actually. just yeah, yeah. his his face that was replaced. Because we do see the man's body. the other man's body kind of exactly, laying there faceless. but You're faceless. Right. Mm-hmm. You're right. <laughs> the same that. body. I'm surprised he didn't get caught, dude. Because I can spot that body anywhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was good. Uh, but what were you gonna say? Sorry about that. Um. Yeah, and also, I mean, this is like the start of the more of the Groundhog Day stuff. Um, when we see that you know his son's dead, like he ended up killing him, mm-hmm. um, which was pretty crazy, and I was like, "Whoa!" Like the ramifications of this, like how is he going to get out of this one? He got out of it. He got shot. He got shot again. Yeah, I, I mean, and how this all unfolds, you know, I, this is what I was struggling with a lot because I have to take into account like how, you know, how dumb am I? Number one, right? And am I am I not just getting it, or is it genuinely confusing? And um, you know, is that in service of mm-hmm. these big reveals and like this finale, this climax? You know, and a lot of times, I mean, number one, what it accomplished greatly was in its pacing, how it it chose to explain things like way after the fact because we mm. see Hayato dead in the cupboard then we see Kira freaking out his dad show up with the arrow the arrow like chews of its own volition to go in him and give him this extra power up then it cuts to like Hayato like it was all a dream and then we think you know like it's common in anime yeah maybe he didn't die maybe he was on the brink of death maybe he was bleeding uh and it doesn't answer the question of what happened for a very long time. So you're kind of jumping to your own yeah, conclusions. Yeah, 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 yeah. And at first I was confused. Uh, but the whole time I was intrigued. And I was mm-hmm. on the edge of my seat. Like, am I am I supposed to be tripping right now? Like, what is happening? Um, but yeah, it, it, the way it all unfolded was, was really crazy. Uh, and we find out that this new ability, which is also a little convoluted, but now that I understand that, I really enjoy it. Tell me if I get this right. So this new ability bites the dust, mm-hmm. essentially latches on to uh, humans that aren't stand users. Yes. Okay. And it kind of follows them around and it's, and it's programmed to, if anybody says the name Kira or even writes down the name Kira, or if that person or somebody else brings up his identity in any way, shape or form, then they will explode and die and it'll send the user an hour back in time Mm -hmm. but if when the user wakes up they try to change the fate their fates it won't matter because fate has already determined that they will die so it can keep killing more people but the people who it's already killed will continue to die in Mm -hmm. in 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 essence they will just like spontaneously combust for no reason obliterate at all and not even know why it happened until Kira has killed everybody he wants to kill. Then he can reset Bites the Dust mm-hmm. so that those deaths will be solidified and be a temporal point for which whenever someone goes back in the past, 
those events will have already happened and can never be undone. That's how I understood it. That's how but I, we could be wrong. That's how I think it is, too. But again, even explaining it, I'm like, that's kind of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot. It's formidable span. for sure. Oh, yeah. And creative as hell. But it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> creative as hell. It's creative as hell. It is. Uh, Yeah. That's how I, I mean, you breaking it down a little bit more is like, that's what happened, right? I, I think. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But we do get to see him kind of, and Hayato step up in a really big, big, big way. And even though, because the stakes come in when at first Rohan dies, and we're learning kind of as Hayato is learning how mm -hmm. Bites the Dust works. So when Rohan dies and he goes back and tries to fix it and then finds out that Rohan still dies because fate is what it is. The stakes are then when everybody gets blown up. Yes. That Hayato only has one more chance to fix it because Kira, once knowing that information, will lock that moment in time and they will be unable to ever undo it. However, Kira is not aware of when people are sent back in time. Yeah, I like that. I like that. He's like, I guess I can estimate, you know, this is my second time here, my third time here or whatever. So there's only one more shot. So, yeah, he has to like with context clues and like, yeah, you know, just kind of judging on like body people's yeah. body language and stuff. He has to kind of deduce mm -hmm. that this might have already happened to them already. But then again, he has to figure out the information that they all die, because if he is in a separate area. Right. Yeah. And they all die. Mm -hmm. but he didn't know that they died already, then he won't know that they died again because he wouldn't have seen it happen unless once the effect is triggered, Bites the Dust is somehow able to relay that information to him. I don't know. It's bizarre. It is bizarre. But we do see Hayato get his fucking big boy pants on and get his big brain working. Big, big brain up. And there was a very, I mean, like, there was a, I mean, and also the stipulation is that, um, uh, that he put his stand onto Hayato so he couldn't like take any damage, couldn't take any harm. So even like Hayato like tries to like off himself Ooh, with like a boss cutter dark. and he stops it. He stops it from happening. At first I thought it I thought he did it. I thought he did it. But too. I still thought he was gonna be groundhog day, but I thought he did it. Yeah, I was like he's really committed. Because they're all talking and he's just like in the background and you just see him in the background like Kh. Yeah. And like, I think there's even dead. a little sound. And I was like he's sound. Like a little Kh. Like, he's dead. Yeah, he survived, though. But then you see a little mini yeah. stand holding the blade back. What's the stand name again? Well, um, let's make sure we get the <laughs> translation correct. Yeah. Um, although people who are really bothered by it, I guess, have already stopped watching, which is a shame. It's a shame and a half. It's a it's a shame. And it really <laughs> makes me sad. And it really makes me sad. And I Killer Queen. It. Killer Queen. Yeah, Killer Queen. Like, Queen. Just wanted to make sure. The Killer Queen, the, the song. Yes. I just wanted to make sure it was the same in, in both. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty crazy moment. And just while this is like kind of happening, I don't know if this happens before or after I get the 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 it it messed up here. Um, but we get to meet like Miyamoto. Okay, yeah. Which was the paper guy. Yes. Um, that was pretty sick. That was pretty cool. Um, he teams up with the biker gang leader. Yes. Um, to sniff him out. And that that guy's crazy. He's sniffing things he probably shouldn't be sniffing. Yeah, um, that was wild. And I also, the stakes were also really high in that, you know, Josuke's mom was involved. Yeah. And uh, I, I really did lo love the resolution to all that as well, too. Mm -hmm. and, and, and how he really stepped up. The the, the biker, you know, Yeah, guy. he did. He did. And, like, um, the standability was so sick just to see, like, once I know how you lie, like, I got you. Or know what you're afraid of. Oh, no, I, th I thought it was lie. Or like it's when you're your, bluffing it's, it's or when your, you're, no, oh, what your reaction your, to fear. Your, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it yeah, was. Yeah. yeah. So he like bites his lip and that's a tell. Um, and he folds anything into paper. Yeah. Great. It was really, that was, that was actually amazing. Better yeah. than the piggyback. Actually, no. Piggyback was good too. They were both good. Piggyback was such an ass too. A little, little shit. Yeah. A little shit. It, yeah. It was just, again, yeah. Now that we're talking about it more, I'm like, damn, they were great. Like yeah. even the, the, the stands that follow, like the rock, paper, scissors one was okay. Um, <laughs> but you know, a lot of them were great. It was just the device. Mm. Like if they would have just been out and about, like mm. you said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I wouldn't have been as, as yeah, like, his, bothered. Yeah, that was Enigma, Enigma, mm. the stand stand user. Um, such a sweet design too. Yeah, he yeah, cool. so sick. He looked really cool. So so sick. 
Um, but that happened in between everything else that's happening, and Koichi gets caught up and gets saved, obviously. Yeah, sorry, um, we're all over the place. It's just a lot. A, a lot happens a in lot happened, different yeah. orders in these couple parts. Right. Um, July 15th. I'll remember July 15th forever. For the yeah. rest of my life. Yeah. I'm going to have a party on July 15th. Ooh. Like, honestly, can we just say fuck the 4th of July? Can we just say that? And then yeah. just, like, have our own kind of, like, special party on July yeah. 15th. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. This is our independence. Yeah. 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 We're about fuck to make it. sure there's no other holiday on July 15th, Yeah, okay. Though. Okay. Like, you're, you're the one who fucking brought it up. Like, you're the one who brought no, it up. No, I'm saying, like, yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Jesus, defensive much. Gaslight Central. Anyway. Um, um, uh, we're almost there. That's why we're almost okay. there. Uh, so yeah, now that Hayato is like <laughs> privy to everything and he's doing his best to outsmart Kira, which he kind of pretty much successfully, which is does. insane. He's like an elementary school student. Just is like, he elementary or middle school? Either way, still impressive. elementary because they have the little hats in oh Japan. Yeah. He's, he's a small child. He's a small boy. Elementary. Elementary. Yeah. Kira's. Dumb as hell. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> he's got, bro, he's got three <laughs> abilities that Jotaro can't, e Jotaro Kujo can't even defeat. Yeah. With brute strength alone. And he let an elementary school kid beat him with no stand ability at, at all. all. Just a love for his mom. This man has the ability to turn back time. And he let an elementary little yellow hat kid, Curious George. Curious George. Get the better of him. Get him. Got him. That's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, he the, the cat plant plan was, like, so good. And I was really rooting for him. I really was until it turned on him mm -hmm. pretty quickly. And it made him, even, Kira, even stronger. Even stronger. And, you know, the classic, oh, I had a watch in my jacket. Bro, I'm honestly so tired of that trope. I mean, it's not Joe's. <laughs> JoJo's fault. Like, there's just so many things that have come after it that just keep doing it. Like, we just watched the movie Glass Onion where they did it in that too. And I'm like, damn, why can't it just, why can't, why does it always have to be that? And why can't they just take damage, you know? Right. And it does not kill them. Uh, I'd rather that. Yeah, I'd rather that for sure. 100%. Like, oh, it missed a vital organ, but it still penetrated me. Yeah. But I'm alive. But I did like how it got brought back at the end. No, in JoJo, it was great. Because he, they brought, he, Iraqi brought it back because it, that was the tall, 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 tall tale. Tell, 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 tell sign. Tell, tell, tell sign. Tell, tell sign. Tell, tell. Tell, tell. Tell, tell. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Tell, tell sign. Yeah. Of uh, that he was dead. And, and that that's what happens work. when you do that in the hands of a master. When that device is in the hands of a master. The tell, tell sign. So tell, tell sign. Can you cut that out? No. But that is also, you know, when you're so good at doing stuff like that, other people bite it and put it in everything, and then it just gets like, uh, you know, old. dusty. Dusty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the cat thing, I wanted it to work and it kind of did, but then it got turned against him. Okuyasu, we get a fake out. Okuyasu looks dead and I believed it. Holy shit that I believe it. Yeah, me too. It was very emotional. It was very emotional. Like, Josuke's just like, get up, man. Like, you're not like, and get Josuke's up. And Josuke's reaction. I know. I know. And baby boy's just like, baby boy. he's like, he's dead. Like, leave him. Like, trying to be the voice of reason. And he's just like, I'm not leaving him because he's not dead. Like, he's just completely like, don't say another word. Like, shut your mouth. Like, so crazy. It got me. Oh, my God. And of You're course, scared. like, you know, before that, when he even sacrifices himself, Hayato sacrifices himself so that yeah. the bomb will ignite. Then Josuke can can heal him and then touch Okoyasu. Um, but when Okoyasu just still didn't wake up, man, oh my god! I, know. I, I, I mean, that that was that was hard, man. That was hard, and I really did not think he was gonna get back up. Me and either. I, my heart broke over and over and over and over. Like how? For Josuke. Yeah, like how though? He got like blown. Like, yeah. Like, blown you know, up. Yeah, like, you're like blown up. Yeah, not like. Uh, he just like had a huge. He wishes he got blown. But. Probably. No, he does. I mean, through the whole thing. Yeah, he does. But. Yeah, no, he for sure does. Um, but he got blown up. Yeah, not the one you want. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> then we see again uh, a battle of which is cool, a battle of strength and a battle of wits at the same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Kira again using devices unbeknownst to Josuke, tracking the location using these invisible bubbles of exploding air 
Um, but somehow through walls of house, able to detect exactly where they're they're at. Oh my god! Um, this was frustrating because you don't you hate the dad. I so fr- he didn't hear someone talking on the phone. I mean, I guess if the no, it wouldn't have been closed because how could it be closed? I don't. I mean, talking we, on the phone like he's right there. Like how could like he not hear that? Well, because even if you buy into that. If you buy into, <laughs> right? I mean, I guess you can't. That's the thing. You can't buy into it too well, much. Yeah, you well, gotta, let's, say, no, let's say you buy the fact that they, that they didn't hear. Yeah. Uh, someone in Hayato's pocket going like, two meters to the left, <laughs> three meters to the right. Let's yeah. say you didn't hear it because it's a little tiny voice, doesn't travel as far, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. The sound waves are smaller and it's in a little pocket, which is kind of huge to the small picture. You know what I'm saying? Let's yeah. Just, let's just say, okay, we buy that. When Josuke gets the phone and does not disguise his voice at all, <laughs> that's what I had a hard time buying. When he's like, Josuke, it's just like the, the voice before it was like, two me get to the left. Yeah, and then the yeah. other voice is like, all right, so you're going to want to go up and to the right. And he was like, he's like, yeah, dad. Okay. Yeah, he's like, thanks, dad. Thank you so much. Yeah. And he's like, and then Josuke, maybe this is the dub and I'm sorry, whatever. But he doesn't change his voice at all. He's like, yes, we got the brat. We got him. And he's like, we got it, right, dad? And he, well, before that, Josuke's like, you know, two meters to the left, two meters to the right. He's like, we got him, right? And he's like, no. And he's like, doesn't change his voice. And then Kira's like, oh, you're Josuke. And it's like, yeah, no, I mean, come on, dude. Like, I wanted the best to part cops. about that fight was that the father finally bit the dust and yes. died. That was the, probably the best part. That was a cool, cool, cool moment. Um, and yeah, I mean just bizarre bizarre behavior we'll, we'll say it again and we'll always say yeah, it. yeah we'll always say hilarious it. Uh, and josuke does use some really smart uses his ability his sustainability really smart ways his yes. own sort of homing device with the shards of glass that have come in contact with the dried blood and are kind of coming back together yeah. I mean, and pulling himself yeah yeah you know yeah. which i think he did earlier um which with again the, that with, was the sometimes Iraqi doesn't even make me think things until he shows me them and then refuses to use it again because yeah. when he was trying to and I know Okuyasu comes in and saves the day at the very end but I would have never really thought that Josuke would have been able to use the ability when he pulled himself back because there were chunks of the the sidewalk in his shoulder yeah and he used it to pull him out of danger I would have never thought of that because Iraqi's a genius and I'm like oh my god that's amazing wow wow but then Josuke's trying to get out of the way again and can't move. But he's got a post Maybe from the be- stairs in him. The stairs that are way over there. The tile, was it on his clothes or was it in his skin? It was in his, yeah, I think it was oh, in his skin. Okay, sure. because if it was in his skin, then I was going to say, like, maybe that's the stipulation because it's a part of him. That's why he can't move it because he can't use his ability on himself. But he was using his blood <laughs> right. and his skin. So he easily could have. I mean, again, this is just like coulda, shoulda, woulda. But it's like you wouldn't have had a fight. You wouldn't have had this moment right, if right. he didn't no, do no, that. You're, and you're right, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> and also maybe by using the ability to pull the spike out of him to, to, to take him away closer to the stairs it would have caused it the wound would have stayed open and he might, might have bled out and it's yeah, like he maybe, would have just been like attached to the to the stairs well you know? no it would have came out of him kind of like the 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 rubble came out of him oh you're right yeah but to, it, to he would have left a gaping hole in his leg and yeah he bleeding everywhere and yeah because they you know when you get like an arrow in you or you get right they say leave it in leave it in they say leave it in um but yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah and it all like you said megan you're so smart Thank we you. wouldn't have had this like crazy awesome moment without it. The crazy awesome moment again being that when we think Josuke has outsmarted Kira and he hasn't, Okoyasu is alive. Shows and he up. comes in to save the freaking day mm-hmm. with one of the coolest, dumbest, mm-hmm. most awesomest lines ever. And I don't mean dumb. Like the line was great, but Okoyasu is a little dumb and we love him for that. But it's like, yeah, I never really thought to think about where things go when 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 I touch them with the hand or whatever. But he's like, I guess, you know, my small brain, you know, can't really comprehend stuff like that. He delivered it way cooler. But he basically just like, you know, shoo, makes things like makes the air bubbles like disappear. I mean, it was like. Yeah. Yeah. And we get a cute moment with his brother, too. And he like yes. literally kind of dies. Yes. And he goes to the light and it's his older brother. And then he says, like, no, nah, you got to get out of here. You got to go. No, he said. Make your own decision. Choose for yourself. This is someone who's maybe been living in his brother's shadow, kind of just been going along. Yeah, and I, I'm glad they got that moment because his last words to his brother was like, this is your fault. Like, that yeah, was crazy yeah. and sad. Like, he's like, this is all your fault. Like, blaming it on him. Like, damn, I remember being like, shit. 
I didn't expect, I expected like, like, bye, like, you know, I guess I'm dead now. No, it was just like, this is all you're doing. It's like, you bitch. So I'm glad he got a little closure with that one because that was rough. Yeah. That was rough. Um, But yeah, he comes back. He comes back and he saves the day. And then we get everyone involved, which mm-hmm. was, which was fun. Um, And at this point I was like, how are they gonna, how are they possibly going to, to kill him right now? You know? Yep. Yep. Like I had I had no idea at this point either. I didn't know what it was gonna take. I knew Okoyasu, of course, gave him this like really huge advantage. Um, but it gets the they get the they the the uh Jotaro and gang, it's brought to their attention because they do hear an explosion. So now they're like, Hey, there's a there's things are exploding. Yeah, probably we should go check it out. Yeah, we should probably go like investigate that. Yeah, an explosion. We know that he can explode stuff. <laughs> right, um, right, right, right. <laughs> Um, and you know, Kira's doing his whole thing, you know, uh, he, he's kind of crawling away. Um, and, uh, the ambulances start coming and everybody starts kind of coming cause you know, there's explosions and things are on fire and he's trying to convince a, a nurse that he just needs help. He needs saving and he kind of takes her as a hostage and just lays it all out on her. I mean, really, his facade, yeah, facade yeah, just falls falls completely because he knows like this might be it like he is really desperate in this in this moment like his cool is just completely gone and he's just really like you know oh just like being so so creepy with this lady um and i think right around this time yeah like even jotro stops time uses the world to see assess the situation um, well, they, he says he can't use the world because it's oh because not- the meat it's not far enough yeah right. that's which, right that's which, right yeah. Um, and they all kind of do their own thing. Like mm. uh, uh, Echoes comes in there and yeah. holds his hand down so that they can run and get a little closer then to use the world yes. to, to get there. But it doesn't look like any of it matters or it helps at all because it looks like Kira is able to detonate, bites the dust and travel back in time. He wakes up in an alleyway mm. completely like back to normal uh, and then slowly starts to realize that uh, he doesn't remember being here at this time, doesn't even know where he's at. He's in the alley. Confronted by by you, actually. By me. By um, uh, Ray- Raimi. Raimi. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that he has died in, in the most humiliating and embarrassing Yeah, way. that was, uh, the irony is so amazing. Like, a thing that killed him was, like, a truck, a vehicle that saves lives. Yeah. And he took lives away from people. And it was an accident. And it was an accident. Because he planned out everything for 15 years of how not to get caught. Like. Yeah, it, it, it was it was perfect. It was perfect. And even the loose ends of like, well, how do people not know that somebody else was in somebody else's body? Or how did like Hayato's family, like, how do you still bring Kira to justice? Yeah. Like, the f- face was ripped off by the wheel. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, like we were saying, like he probably still has the same body, but a different face. But even still, like they, he had told the 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 person his real identity when his facade dropped. He told her, "Yeah, I'm Kira." Yeah. Um, so they just chalk it up to Kira. And also, I mean, they, you know, no one's doing real cleanup. You know, Josuke Jotaro don't don't do the cleanup. No, so there are too big for that. There are still bodies in the Cinderella salon. Right. So his body's there just with no face, DNA testing, you know. Yeah, and because uh, he's missing. And the they dad. go back to Kira's house and no one's there. So they, you know, put it all together. And it's just, it's a really nice bow and everything. And Kira gets like satisfying justice. Yeah. Satisfying justice when he's in the, in the, you know, sort of alley. He's confronted by Raimi. He, like, he thinks he gets the upper hand on her. She's been plotting for a long time too. Um, yeah, nothing but time. Yeah, nothing but nothing time. Nothing but time in her thoughts. All dedicated to taking this man out. And her dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah literally. She's like, You think I'm you think I'm dumb? And like, uh yeah. He gets he gets got. And uh it's so just again satisfying. And what's even more beautiful is she gets to go to heaven, I assume. You know, the afterlife, paradise, whatever you want to call it, but she has sort of fulfilled her her purpose and gets to pass on um that to was, the afterlife and that was really really cool that was nice too yeah we get to see everyone everyone shows up for the send-off 
And Koichi's like, please don't go. Please. I'm like, Koichi. She yeah, has... Koichi, shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, like, for yeah, real. Sometimes yeah. I just want to, like... Sometimes. Yeah. Most, uh, not of, all, sometimes yeah. I, most of the time, I love him. Yeah, but sometimes I'm like, Koichi, just... Because, you know, like, stop. With, with, with Jotaro, it's like, you know, I love Jotaro all the time. And then when Jotaro does something questionable, like yell at the wind or something, or, like, question hearing Josuke's voice over the wind or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go... Freaking Jotaro, dude! Come on, bro. What are you doing? But when Koichi does something, something stupid, I'm like, Koichi, you're shut the fuck up, dude. You're done. It's like my reaction to yeah. them doing things bad or different. Maybe because right? you know that Jotaro would like fuck you up. Oh yeah, yeah. And oh yeah. Koichi probably would too. Right, but I would think I could stand a chance against him. You know, because in this universe, in the Jojo, if I existed in the Jojo universe, I would have a stand. You think so? I would. You don't think you'd be standless? No way. Um, Interesting. I'd have my stand would be probably something about like you know I would I'd be able to like you know because I like to make props and stuff mm-hmm. like you know whether it for be for cosplay or whatever yeah so I would I would probably like I don't know how it would work exactly but like I would take maybe everyday like foam or like you know scraps mm-hmm. and I would be able to like make things out of them you know weapons maybe mm-hmm. um, disguises you know like for co- that's you know, cool. Cosplay. And then since my favorite band as a kid, because we're doing it like music. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite band as a kid, The Used. So that's what my stand would be called, The Used, because it also uses scraps. That's You've really thought about I this. I did think about it a little bit. I know. I feel bad. I don't it's have not, one. That's not fair, because I did think about it a little. I didn't plan on debuting it here on this episode. Yeah, but, but I was in the, in the shower one day, and I just, just was yeah. thinking about it. I don't have one. Well, now you got the chance to think about it. And it's going to be really cool when you, when you mm. do come up with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be really cool. I'm trying to think of even songs. Are you like, like one of my favorite songs as a child, "Pork and Beans" by Weezer? So that could be my stand name. Pork and Beans, okay. Yeah. And we just gotta, we just gotta let it simmer like beans and pork and beans, and think yeah. about what it would do. And then we come back in the next episode and we tell them what it is. You know. But I'm not like married to pork and beans. Okay, you workshop like, it. Yeah. In the comments will maybe help you out too. Yeah. Right, guys, you guys will help her out. Dumb bitch stand. <laughs> you stand this dumb bitch stand. <laughs> Megan Stan should be a dumb bitch. Because yeah. that's what she is. Um, I use that as maybe, you know, I was just say a term of endearment, but I was just, I'm talking low to myself. No, it's just a little yeah. jab. It's a, a little, little self-deprecating. Yeah. Self-deprecating, yeah. Yeah, deprecation. Yeah. Uh, deprecation, no bleeding. Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, oh, Papa Roach. Your stand is called Papa Roach. Uh... But anyway, <laughs> all that brings us to the end. We get a beautiful, wow. beautiful, beautiful. And I did want to say, I know uh, I, I was wrapping it up, but I did want to say what was probably, it was beautiful seeing Raimi pass on to the to the afterlife. But it was also a horrifying device. This purga- alley of purgatory that existed when people died to see them like being shot up yeah. and turned into energy and like, ah, and they're like, them start crumbling like that was crazy like when it happened to rohan and happened to some well because they were murdered you know i'm sure people yeah. that just died peacefully or just died in different ways were kind of like i accept death but like to have their life taken from them is a different story people will be mad yeah and people will be probably just feel that feeling before they shoot up you know but the final episode also ends with a look sort of through morio we get to pass through the town the music uh, starts playing and we get to see everybody that we've met along yeah. this crazy journey and it so is the nice. most wholesome most beautiful sweetest prettiest bow on top of a awesome story yeah it made me yeah nostalgic it's yeah. like oh i'm never gonna see these guys again hmm. well i think uh josuke comes back in yeah you part. mentioned that i try to forget <laughs> it you mentioned that um, but yeah, and again, Why also, that's not a surprise. Come on, no, it's not. And again, uh, we, you know, we can talk about it for sure. And uh, I mean, the OPs and the OP and the ED, the two OPs, and then the one ED, I believe, like, you know, of course, bangers. I mean, JoJo just knocks it out of the park with the OPs, both bangers, of course. I did find myself, I think, liking the second one more than the first one. Break up, break up. But nothing, I'm sorry. The EDs were incredible. The ending, beautiful, nostalgic. But nothing beats. No, 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 no,
Yeah, it's just that's just like beautiful. It hits hard. It's the later so it gets, good. it yeah. hits it, it hits way too it hits way too hard. When yeah. you watch it over again, you see Iggy and Polner F sitting together. Just uh, yeah, it hurts. It hurts. Uh, it's a different. Uh, <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> what are you on the toilet? <laughs> uh, Kira's taking a shit. Ew. This is my impression of Kira taking a shit. Uh, uh, he wouldn't take a shit like that. It'd be. He, he he would he'd be so composed he'd be like surgical about it oh you know he'd pull it out himself no he just like a little you know and then it, yeah, we don't have to go there we don't have to, we don't have to go there. we don't have to go there um <laughs> he'd get it right in the, in the right, hole. right 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 we don't have to go there stop stop <laughs> stop um beautiful 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 um, incredible series. Yeah. Ultimately, it was a tough, tough call for me with just the place that part three holds in my heart. Um, I But I do think that part four beat it out. <laughs> Even if it was by a little bit, part four is now my favorite part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Again, I feel obligated to say it, not by much. It's very close. And maybe, honestly, so close that depending on the day, I might be <laughs> a different answer. But, it's like your two children, you know, you can't pick one or the other. Yeah. Even one, if one is a serial killer. True. But, for everything you said in the beginning, Megan, that is absolutely why this part just stands, uh, you know, apart and, um, you know, won me over the way it did. Spending time in one location, getting to meet the inhabitants of this town mm. and really scaling things down, including the stakes, making everything feel more personal, more intimate and by product, like more terrifying yeah, and more bizarre. But also heartwarming, funny. I mean, it, it really just it really just had and has everything. And Josuke is an amazing protagonist. Like amazing, 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 amazing protagonist. Um, and really everybody that we met, goofy, kind of fucked up, uh, awesome. Like everybody, I loved everybody. And I loved seeing how they all bounced off of each other. Yeah. And uh I'm sad that we'll never see Morio again. I know, me too. I I mean, we say this every time, but moving forward, I mean, I just have I don't know what to expect. I know the next part a lot of people like, but that, I feel like it's every JoJo a lot of people like, but a lot of people do not like. JoJo. And they would not put it on their like top 3, which is really interesting. Um because I've seen like I don't know who characters are for the most part, but I've seen this next part is definitely like the most iconic, I would say, like JoJo characters um, because they're iconic because I've seen the most of them, um, like their outfits. I've seen them on like, you know, Twitter, um, fan art, cosplay. Mm -hmm. Like I could recognize these characters even, bef even before I was reading or watching JoJo. I was like, oh, that's a JoJo. That's a JoJo. That's a JoJo. Um, but yeah, like you were saying, people either really love it or really hate it. And I feel like I've seen more people not like it, mm. but I'm I, I'm open. Um, and that's what's crazy and beautiful about JoJo is every part is so different and has so many things to offer and is doing so many different things that it really does depend on like what you gravitate to, which is why I think like people's lists when it comes to the series are so incredibly different. And I can't help but think back to when I was spiraling. Uh, and looking at other people's list and just really feeling like there was no, there was no just sort of like, uh, uh, I mutual guess, consensus, like, like I consensus, guess. Yeah, like yeah. consensus is the, is the word. Um, and I, I was like panicking, like about what part I was going to like and, you know, the next part, part three, like how I was going to feel. But again, like a Rocky says, he starts, he understands Jojo. The more he writes it, the more I consume it, the more I understand it. And also like the love that surrounds it and why people's lists are so different and why people latch on. I mean, mm. it, it's just, it, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. And that trickles down not only to the story itself, but to the fandom and the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That 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 loves JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and uh, I mean, it's just such a special thing. Community and every like the community is such a special thing. Um, the series is such a special thing. Iraqi is such a special artist and person, and uh, I, I I love this series. Another one for the books. Another one for the books. Another one. Um, 
but I mean, I think we did it. I, I think that's it. Yay, High five. Another part of JoJo. <laughs> Um, a, yeah, amazing. I had such a fun time. It was just so... I'll just look back with fond memories of this part. Yeah, I, I'll definitely look back with very fond memories, too. And I cannot wait to jump into part five. Golden Wind, I believe? Golden Wind. And not to be confused with Golden Showers. Not to be confused. Wasn't this even is where me. people fart on you instead. Oh, Golden Wind. I like that. Uh, that's actually really good. Um, and Giorno, we're going to meet him. I, we know a little bit about him, but we're going to get to see what he's all about. Mm -hmm. And we're excited. And hopefully, you know, you're as excited as, as we are. Um, thank you again for being here, for clicking on this video. If you're watching or listening and you're still watching or listening at this point, we love you so, so much. Um, thank you for fucking with us. Thank you for rocking with us. Please, please, genuinely, we sometimes for better or for worse, we read all the comments <laughs> on, on the videos. Sometimes it's a bad thing, but. Please let us know your thoughts now that we're done, now that we can talk about JoJo uh, in part four in its entirety. Let us know your thoughts on, on this part, where it falls for you, what you really loved about it, what you didn't love about it. Anything and everything, any feelings or thoughts you have on it, please let us know in the comments down below. Like I said, if you haven't liked the video, like the video. I'm doing a thumbs up because you got to click the thumbs up because uh, that helps out a lot. But that is going to do it for another installment of volume one's bizarre adventure however we are not quite done yet before we go no. we have to shout out and we have to thank our wonderful beautiful amazing patreon and youtube members Yay. thank each and every one of you guys for your support from the bottom of our hearts you guys we are, love you so much you guys are the backbone of volume one volume one everything Literally. Uh, everything <laughs> we do like we genuinely wouldn't be able to do the things that we do without you um you have no idea how much you uh how much of an impact you've made on our life yeah. and continue to make on our life and we <laughs> hope and and strive to do the most we possibly can to show our appreciation for your appreciation and generosity like to do it of your own free will will never not mean the world to us yeah uh you guys mean the world to us and will always mean the world to us uh it blows us away you guys are incredible and it moves us and we love you and <sighs> We appreciate you so much. Like, so fucking much. So much. Uh, we love you. We love you. We love you. And I'm going to keep it I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. <laughs> uh, so thank you from the bottom of both thank of our hearts. Thank you so much. Uh, if you're not a Patreon or YouTube member and you'd like to become one, all you got to do to become a Patreon member is go to patreon.com slash volume one pod. Uh, and to become a YouTube member, all you got to do is click join somewhere next to the subscribe button on this video. Um, and you get a lot of things. You get Early access to all of our episodes. Mm -hmm. You get access to our uncut, uncensored reactions. Any and all. That's Chainsaw Man, Bleach, One Piece. Any anime we react to, you get access to the full uncut. Yes, yes. Well. And more to come in the future. Yes. A lot the more to come shopping. in the future. Megan had a great idea. We're workshopping it, and I'm excited about it. Um, and you get access to our exclusive, exclusive bonus Patreon podcast, Volume 1 Extra, which we're doing more of, and... Uh, Kind of changing the direction a little changing bit. Changing the direction. Keeping um, it more casual, keeping it more behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, just... yeah, yeah. More of a podcasty feel. If yeah. you're listening to this, obviously it is a podcast. Uh, but if you are watching on YouTube and you're looking for us more, I would I wouldn't say un I mean we said a lot of crazy shit in this episode. I want to say unfiltered. Um, but, but it's just more, more just personal. More, personal, personal, more personal, more laid back, more laid back talking it's... about life stuff or whatever we feel like talking about that day. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're super excited to lean more into that direction as yes. well. Yeah. So, uh, you get all of that and you get all of it everywhere. You know, hopefully we can continue to do it this way. Mm. We might have to reassess and change some things, but as of right now, and I think if you get in right now, then, you know, I don't think you'll be affected by it, but you know, we really have wanted to always wanted to make all these things available at, at our lowest tier. So right now yes. they are available, everything at our lowest tier. It's just based on, you know, how much you can give if you are willing to give anything mm -hmm. at all. Um, but yeah, so patreon.com slash volume one pod to become a Patreon member. Clicking join somewhere next to the subscribe button to become a YouTube member. Um, yeah. If, for whatever reason, um, you're not in a place where you can support financially or you just flat out don't want to, please do not feel bad because there are plenty of other ways you can show your support for absolutely free. 99 that means just as much that Megan will tell you all about right now. Yes. Um, I'm not used to not cutting to the camera, so I'm like, I know. no, it's okay. I kind of forgot now I'm leaning into No, just... it's okay. I shouldn't have mentioned it. Now I look unprofessional. No. Um, if you don't have any more stand nutrients, 
to spare. Oh, God. Um, you have no more nutrients spare. Don't worry about it. Don't even trip. Like, everyone is in that spot and continuously still in that spot if you can't. Um, there's so many things you can do for free. Um, you can comment, like, even subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. That really does help us out. And uh, commenting, uh, algorithm gang gang, where you at? Let's hear you. Let's hear you. Woo I was going to bark, but... Um, you know, algorithm gang bark. Do they bark? Are they? Woo. Maybe, they, they, Maybe they, they do. They're gang affiliated. Sometimes Maybe they, they just comment out. a period, but we appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can comment anything you want, um, a period, a comment, or uh, an emoji. And it really does help us out so much. Helps the algorithm out. And we also have social media as well. Instagram, Twitter, um, and a wonderful Discord community if you're looking for people to talk to about anime and manga and anything at all. Um, and yeah, you can do that all for free. To help the us out. Last thing we'll say. <laughs> long, <laughs> long part. Okay. But the last thing we'll say is uh, to the end of December, 30% off all of our merch, Woo! which there will be a link to in the description down below. Old St. Weeb is the discount code. Yes. 30% off to the end of December, to the end of the year. So if you've been eyeing something, but it's a little maybe out of your price range, hopefully now this will help. Get something for yourself. Treat yourself. Okay. If you have a friend that listens to Volume One Podcast, treat them too. <laughs> if even if they don't like Volume One Podcast, you want to get them a little something, just give them give them a, a hoodie or a shirt, and they'll be like, "What's this from?" And you'll be like, "Don't worry about it. You don't know? worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about it." Um, but truly, any and all way you choose to show your support, we appreciate. Even if you're just here now to the very end view duration, it means a lot too. So thank you, thank you, thank you from both of us, from the bottom of both of our hearts. Now we're done. Now the only thing left to do is to get out of here on our outro. It's always the same. It never changes, which Megan already has. Oh, my gosh, Gita. This was a great part. Oh, my gosh, Gita. This was a great part. I'm trying to think if we can punch that. We can't punch up the oh, my gosh, Gita part. That's What a part. Oh, my goodness. What was the first one? Oh, my gosh, Gita. What a great part! What a great. Let's just keep. I mean, you can't. You can't fix brilliance. perfection. Yeah, you can't fix brilliance. You know, you can't mm. polish a whatever. It's great, and that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to compliment you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And until next time. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh Gita! What, what a great part! part. <laughs>